ho ho everyone and welcome to time capsule here on the games done quick twitch channel the show where we travel back in time to your favorite years in gaming and speed run our way through popular or influential games released in a particular year in this final episode of 2020 we are traveling back to the year 1997 or as i like to call it the year of the sequel and it has been a long time coming for this episode specifically. I am very excited to feature runs tonight, such as Tomb Raider 2, Star Wars Jedi Knight, Dark Forces 2, and later Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. But before the festivities can begin, we need to cover some announcements. AGDQ 2021 online is less than two weeks away from January 3rd through the 10th, and we will be having a week-long marathon benefiting the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Prize submissions for that are open until December 26th. You can go to gamesdonequick.com to find out more information. And if you are watching this episode of Time Capsule on YouTube from the future and would like to support our live content, please consider checking out our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash GDQ. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe to any Twitch channel of your choice every month for free. Uh, please consider using your Prime Gaming account to support the weekly GDQ Hotfix content. That's going to be covering it for the announcements. I'm sure many of you are incredibly distracted by this uh, merry menu. Footy is here. Hi, Footy. <laughs> thank you for being Hello. here. <laughs> um, thank you for agreeing to run the Tomb Raider 2 Christmas mod. Uh, I asked Footy specifically for this. Uh, how are you feeling about it? Uh, it's really okay. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty interesting one because a lot of uh, models are changed. So. Yeah, the, so it's we're going to... Festive. It is very festive. Uh, the main thing, I guess, is the texture differences with a couple of little things different here and there. But um, this is going to mark actually the first time Tomb Raider 2 Glitchless will be seen on the Games Done Quick channel. So I'm really excited because uh, this is a game that I love a lot. Footy loves this game a lot. So yeah, Footy, whenever you are ready to uh, save Christmas or kill it, I, I guess you can give us the countdown. <laughs> okay. I'll start on the go. So three two, one, go. And uh, here we go with the clickless Christmas mod. Lara's looking uh, pretty good in the in the Santa suit, I gotta say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you won't see him here, but uh, I, Buddy, I believe mentioned to me that the tigers that are typically here in the Great Wall are snow leopards instead for this version. Yeah. Yeah. Look and how like beautiful. Crows have a sweater on, so. Oh yeah, we're gonna be seeing <laughs> little crows in their Christmas sweaters. That's actually something I don't have. I don't have an ugly Christmas sweater. I need to fix that. Footy, do you have an ugly Christmas sweater? No, I don't have any specific oh. ones. What's, what's wrong with us? <laughs> <laughs> need to get one. So, Footy, can you maybe explain it a little bit about why uh, we pull Lara's guns out uh, for oh. certain places? Yeah, so drawing guns uh, prevents some camera angles when, for example, if you pull a lever, game tends to show you what opened or what happens. And if you draw guns, it cancels that camera. And also, you get the maximum turning speed when you have fully equipped pistols. Well, guns, but pistols mostly, because they're the, the fastest to draw. Here they are, my little sweaters. But yeah, that does come in handy quite a bit, especially in uh, places like here, when it's like really uh, tight corners and small little corridors. That extra movement speed uh, helps you get around a bit easier. Yeah. There's a lot of small techniques in this game. People tell it's a, or say it's a tank controls, but I feel like it's pretty smooth. <laughs> it, yeah, it doesn't, so the game is, t you know, tank controls, but it doesn't really feel like it uh, when you have things like equipping or pulling out the guns for that extra movement yeah. speed. I just noticed that the skeleton is even festive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's been a really long time since I played the Christmas mod myself, so a lot of these things are going to be surprising me and uh, maybe footy. I'm not sure how many times you practiced in the Christmas mod, but I know you do play Tomb Raider a lot. I did this like three years ago, I think, and then I did three runs 
past two days. Nice. So, I'm ha I have some, some practice. I have to do it because I've been grinding glitched, so. Yeah, the competition is really heating up in the glitched category for this game right now. Yeah. Also, for one mechanic in this run, you use you see me use is a flare cancel, which is uh, when you draw a flare and throw it before you land, it skips the stumble animation completely. Yeah, and then that's just that's just extra time save. Like it's surprising how that adds up. Like if you don't do the flare cancels, that those stumbles are what like one to two seconds. Apiece. Yeah, like I think it's like one point seven or something. Yeah, seconds. they they add up. So that's the only use for flares. <clears throat> I guess in some other versions of the game, uh, like the PS1 PAL version, flares have other purposes. But uh, for our purposes today, we'll, we'll just be doing the flare cancels. Yeah. Oh my I god. Slow there. I slow down there uh -huh. just to kill the dog. <laughs> I'm getting like the worst outcome here again. They're trying to distract you. Look at this Rudolph imposter here. They don't, they don't want you to save Christmas. So I'm going to here do the first save. So there's no checkpoints unless I save the game. Yeah. Luckily, it's a quick, quick yeah. save. So right there, um, what he did was called a banana jump, and uh, it's kind of a strange thing. You have to line Lara up like in a very sort of particular position so that she can almost like body check the wall. So she'll like kind of hit her shoulder uh, like on uh, the edge of a wall, and then that allows Footy to kind of curve around something to land uh, in those cubbies, in the little sections like that. There's, I think, a couple more banana jumps that will come up. Yeah, Barking on Monastery has probably the best one. And okay. Probably the, it's the window jump. Oh, the, oh yeah, yeah, the buffet jump. I don't know why I call it that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I'm using a lot of safe strats, um, which might seem a bit slow, but there's a lot of them just because. They are not worth to go for any faster ones. Uh, failing them just lose like a minute every time. Yeah, failing in the, like this game really is tough. It's not very forgiving. So if you mess up and you know you don't save or you don't do a strat that is maybe a little bit safer, at least for a marathon setting, it can be uh, a bit of a time uh, loss. Yeah. So in this level, this guy is really like issue sometimes <clears throat> depending on what kind of orange you get he's not being very nice to you today no nope. i've gotten i've gotten him before where he literally doesn't shoot lara yeah, at I all and it's i think today both runs i did i got destroyed uh, <laughs> yeah it's like it just depends on how, how he's feeling that day yeah and this next thing is like might look weird but, um there's i don't need to press the button. I just need to get on the certain tile and it opens the door at the end. Yeah, uh, so casually you would press a button like right next to that enemy to open the exit door. But um, yeah, for some reason the game is just a bit weird and so Footy yeah. just swam into that tile uh, to open the door and it, you know, just works. Just Tomb Raider things. And all you have to swim under the door because that, that's on Twitter, the timer for this door. Everyone who plays this casually might remember the timed run, which was awful. Oh, it was very awful. You had to like go up the ramp and like do all the stuff. Yeah. It's so funny because... Oh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as long as you go under the door after opening the end door, uh, you'll be fine, you don't have to hurry. It's funny because I was thinking, I was asking Footy before that we started today, like, when was the last time you ran Tomb Raider 2 uh, just completely casually? <laughs> it had been a while, I think, because you get impatient. At least yeah, I do. Like four years. Yeah, it's it's a it's a long, long burn. It's a long, slow yeah. burn. Uh -huh. So I want to kill a lot of rats here because this guy is delayed. The game engine cannot handle too many enemies at the same time, and they won't load. 
like in time usually, so. Uh -huh. The game is a bit. It's an old one, so. 1997, shout out. Uh, yes, that's correct. We are on the third stage of the game. This is Bartoli's yeah. hideout. And they decorated too in Bartoli's hideout. I like to see it. You wouldn't be able to see it, but Footy just pulled a, like a switch there. Some yeah, it opens a massive door. Yeah, easy to easy to do if you know the step count and everything, but I guess for a casual player, you might need to use a flare <laughs> to see. Yeah, the flares are like uh, kind of tight in this run. Yeah, you don't want to waste too many, I guess. My route is like there's zero left, but I've I changed it a little bit for Marathon, so I, not like they don't they are not necessarily like glitched where if you don't have them, it's over. But. It's just yeah. like cool to have. Nice to have extra. Yeah. Makes the run look smoother. Uh, Cosmic so yeah. mainly. It had been a while, but you actually can pull up through this balcony uh, in glitched, but I feel like it was uh, disallowed. I don't know, within yeah. the past couple of years. Um, I wondered, I know we'll, we'll maybe get into it a bit later when we get to floating islands, but I wondered if it was the same concept for that trap door, but I'll, I'll ask you again when we get there. <laughs> trap door found just like recently. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the fence acts like an actual object. So you can't climb up when the trap door actually isn't. It's just a texture. Uh, okay, fair. There's an instance in this level which is exact same when you jump through the fireplace. Like it looks like you go. Oh right, right. That's coming up there. soon. That's coming yeah. up uh, here in a second. Laura's gonna have to avoid the fire. There's no official category for this. Like you're not allowed to use mods for like official submissions yeah so today's run um would not be allowed uh on the later boards but uh it is the same yeah as... exactly same yeah it's the exact same as a normal glitchless run it's just very well festive as you can see <laughs> tis the season and all and he... you can see me like let go the grab and then let grab again uh, mm -hmm. It cancelled the swinging completely. Saves a lot of time overall. I'd say that's probably like a, a bit equivalent to like a flare cancel. Like you save a little bit of time just by not swinging there and waiting for yeah. Lara to like pull herself up. Um, I missed it this one. This the jump chandel is a bit yeah. the, the chandelier jump is tricky. There you go. It you have make, to do like it, a late hard. grab. Yeah. It's really hard because the chandelier, um, you can't really see the edge of it or the corner. So you basically just have to go what, by the feel and just get the muscle memory for it. Mm. There's a lot, of, there are setups for a lot of these jumps that are tricky, but um, I feel like when you've played this game as much as Footy has, you kind of get familiar with, you know, you get used to doing it without the setups. Yeah. I'm just going to pick him back up mid here. Late game is awful if you are mm -hmm. under mid. Oh, yeah. Definitely want to have at least two meds for the, <laughs> the last bit. And in this game, like tomorrow one and two, the grab grabbing in the like these games is weird because the later you grab, the further you go, basically. So you can reach places where you're not supposed to go. If you grab like really late. It, there's like a little bit of a window for it though too, because like if you don't grab in time, Lara will just start falling. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well that takes us to Upper House. Good job. I can see it, yes. Yeah. Footy can see chat, but I'm trying to stay on top of it in case there are any questions for Footy yeah. specifically for the game. And I try to focus because I had so many issues 
doing glitches today even. Oh yeah. Well, actually, I have to thank you again, Footy, for being here, just because I know it is so late for you <laughs> right now. Yeah, it's 3 a.m. <laughs> it's 3 a.m. Uh, for Footy. Meanwhile, it's like a little after 5 p.m. for me here in Pacific time zone. So um, shout out to Footy for, for staying awake. So coming up here is going to be kind of another one of those late grab situations. Uh, oh no, you're going to do it a little bit different. Yeah, I'm not going for the ra risky. I'll just do this. Yeah, safe straps. Footy, I do. Less. Yeah. It's, you don't go through the corners. You can go through the corners because it happens sometimes. But you are not allowed to go through the corners which the trigger skips, like enemies or traps or something like that. And yeah. And what else? <laughs> go um, inside the walls or yeah, I can't, on top of the walls and stuff like that. Can't do any of the basic, I guess, glitch techniques, which, yeah, I would say is going through um, various corners to like get to higher places in the game. Yeah. Um, and I believe Footy's in Finland, correct? Yeah. Yep. Footy is from Finland. So shout to Finland. <laughs> <laughs> and here's another skip. You can do like a late fake grab uh, where Lara drops directly below the ledge instead of grabbing it. And yeah. You can, uh, you can abuse it and then skip the whole theater part. Open. Yeah, you want to do that, I guess, a couple of times in this level because otherwise Lara will just like crunch her feet on the broken glass and it is unpleasant. <laughs> yeah. So there's a curved jump, another one of those which skips like probably half of the level. Like glitched and glitchless, this level is they are different, but they're, they're like both really short. Yeah, they're both pretty short. Like three minute ish, right? Like Which is so fun. Like it's so funny too because this level in particular is so long. Yeah. Oh, well, I noticed one, I, I noticed uh they had Tomb Raider Legend Lara on the side of the plane just then at the end of Opera House. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I haven't noticed that one. The plane babe. Tomb Raider Legend shoutouts. Yeah, you know, um, I, I did, uh, I did run this game a lot more back in the day. Uh, I'm very out of practice. Footy's a far superior runner to this game than I am. But you know, we're getting there. I'm, I'm relearning uh, glitchless recently. Yeah, this is my favorite one. I have the most hours in it. Oh, Something just Tomb Raider 2? Yeah, Tomb Raider 2 specifically. Yeah, this is my favorite, absolutely, my favorite Tomb Raider game. So here we can... We need help from these guys, because you, you can't glitch through this window, so we just let him shoot the window for us, which is definitely not the way you're meant to do it, but... Oh yeah, that's super... It's like, that's that's one of the funny things about the glitchless category, is like, you can still kind of abuse the system a little bit, but... Yeah. Um. Yeah. Have you ever gotten uh, where the guy didn't shoot the window? Yeah, that was when before I knew how to make the guy pass differently. Yeah. Um, you want to stand in front of the key card and they run towards you faster. For whatever reason. Can I get the double? Yes. Oh, nice. So if I, if I can place myself like specifically between two items, I can pick two or multiple items. There's one spot you can even do like eight or ten pickups. Yeah, not, there's a it's, another uh, section coming up too with the triple pickup if you can get it. Yeah, it's just one of those no, things. We're using AI time. again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the AI, <laughs> the AI is going to be very abused coming up here soon. <laughs> there are a few gentlemen. Uh, that uh, would like Lara's affections, and she just isn't gonna take that. <laughs> so 
So I'm just gonna do like a diff like certain kind of movement here and stay against this wall and they climb up indefinitely. And I can just kill them on the one pile and get all the pick up at the same time. <laughs> which is faster than doing it individually. And that gives us three mets. That's, there you go, the triple. This is one of the safe strats, actually. You don't mm -hmm. pick these up in re like a proper run. Oh, okay. But it makes the late game so scary. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> so you, there you see me uh, turn really quickly with guns. That door, I believe, is on a timer, so yeah. you have to press that button and be pretty quick about it. This is another one of these, like, kind of silly ones. The fire hitboxes are so weird in these games. They try to fix them, like, from one to three, or even a four one, but, like, all of them are... Like, you can trick them a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, it is kind of nice. It, it happens in a couple of places in the game. I can, I think, uh, later down in one of the water levels, you have to like go through the stove and try not to get burned. <laughs> yeah, diving area. Diving area, that's correct. That jump is a bit tricky, but we got it. Yeah, nice. I thought you were gonna use a the flare there to cancel that, but. I guess, like, if Lara hits the ceiling in a certain way, like, depending on how low it is, she can still kind of make it places without stumbling. Yeah, I actually don't know what's the requirements for it, because it just happens in so many places, and sometimes it doesn't happen, and I'm like, well, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> And in this game, or in these games, if you push or pull a block, these enemies somehow can just go through them. Yeah, so like, you're gonna see these guys them a little bit. probably try to go through this box. Yeah, there yeah. it goes. <laughs> they get sent like really high up in the air and they, they are falling slowly. And they should fall after I pull, pull, uh, push this one. They have become the box temporarily. <laughs> Very nice. And I think the shotgun guys have Larson's face from TR1. Oh, do they? Yeah, I was trying to... We were trying to determine, like, what was different. Um, but yeah, I think you're right, actually. I know some enemies have Tony's from Tomb Raider 3. <laughs> That's fun. They're, like, throwing it back. So I'm gonna save here, because... Yeah. Sometimes you a... get angle climb up, and it, it messes up the setup here. This is, like, a precise setup. Um... One, two, three. So I do three inventory buffers to draw guns, and then I start running after the third buffer and draw guns two times. And when she puts them away, the second time you'd hold grab, and that allows us to grab the last frame before she goes to a free fall. Yeah, like, it's pretty tight timing, uh, if you try to do it without the buffers, uh, yeah. you have to really watch for it, but uh, I imagine it's probably a bit more comfortable to do on the keyboard, uh, as opposed to the controller, just because when you're holding the controller, like, you have to do weird claw strats, and it's, it can be complicated. Yeah, I can't, I can't do a controller, it's, it's <laughs> difficult. That's where we're, that's where Footy and I, like, butt heads, it's like he's team keyboard <laughs> and I'm team controller for this game. Shooting one of these enemies makes them run away. Like, I don't really know why, but... The, war the warning shots fired. Yeah. They are just weird enemies. Uh, yeah, and to reiterate, this is uh, the exact same uh, as Glitchless would be in a traditional run, but we're just doing a, the Christmas mod, so... 
uh, that's something that you can uh, give a quick Google search to if you want to find out uh, how we're doing that. Now the best part, one minute later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for the Metal Gear Solid 3 jokes, because this yeah. is a pretty long one. <laughs> Don't worry, it will come up again. It's only half a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> full, full minute the first time. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's a fun question for, for chat. Are you team controller for, for these tank control Tomb Raider games? Or are you team uh, keyboard, keyboard or controller? Controller has ha has its own advantages, but... Mostly it's just... Can't work. Yeah, I, I it's funny. I don't know. It's funny how how that is. It's just what you you're used to. Like I I played this on a original uh, I guess PlayStation, and so that's what I'm used to. I mean, I actually started running on PS One game. Like, oh yeah, game. nice. But it, because it was PS One and I couldn't do the bufferless jumps, I was really bad. It was frustrating. I gave up and I was. <laughs> <PC>. <laughs> yeah, the the PlayStation One uh, leaderboards or the, just the PlayStation leaderboards for this game are pretty small. So if uh, you do like playing this on uh, the old system, I would say uh, give it a go. Oh, there's crit team keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Having my back. Yeah. Now the 30 second ladder. There's not too many ladders overall. It's just this one is just. Yeah, the other ones are pretty, pretty short. Well, yeah. I guess, I guess. Uh, I Siana has at the end. I can't even think of the, oh, uh, Tibetan foothills, I think. <laughs> yeah. Barkane has few. Siana has like, there are few, but like they're not this long. I need to remember to pick this one. Oh, this. Yeah, this guy can be a little scary sometimes if he starts like getting in your way. Because if he knocks you off, you it's like yeah, there's okay. no backup. You just yeah, have there's... to go again for the ladder. <laughs> yeah, there's no backup. It's like you and the ladder, to part three. So Footy's using the auto pistols here because uh, otherwise this section is a bit messy. You can get caught on fire by this flamethrower guy. So the auto pistols yeah. are a little bit faster. <laughs> so getting the job done. supposed to be here yet. So that usually dog. rolling is slow. If I do it, it's for convenience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just turn underwater, but sometimes you just misclick with the jump. I find it a little bit easier to line her up sometimes if I just do like a roll. Yeah. Roll is usually slower, but some places it's like, it's just better. Because it's not that much lower, slower. Oh, we've got the question, the, the million dollar question. Will we trap the butler in the freezer after this round? I guess that's up to Footy. <laughs> we will see. We will see. We will see when we get there. Yeah, you know, it must have taken them a really long time to, to decorate some of these levels. You gotta wonder, like, who did this? Like, if you're if you're thinking about it from a in-game yeah. perspective, like, who really put the time into this? You know, like, Bartoli is, uh, I don't know, just like a full Christmas fiend. It's like, I want this decorated and this decorated. It's like one minute after Thanksgiving dinner, and he's just like, we need to move, move, move. I want to see this place decorated from top to bottom. So here I'm setting up again a double pickup to save a little bit of time. And just saving, just in case. Yeah, this is like one of those uh, fire weird hitbox things. Like, yeah. hopefully it won't be an issue, but... It's very easy to do, but 
there's a mechanic in this game. If you jump against the wall on a certain angle and the ceiling is low enough, you get a jump called tunnel jump, and it tra makes you travel like way f further than you're meant to, and then that messes up the sequence, and you get set on fire. Yeah, it's definitely weird. Like if you get a tunnel jump, you know it immediately. <laughs> yeah, you're like, what happened? <laughs> Suddenly on fire. And when it happens, like you, you don't really usually have the time to react because the input already goes through. Yeah, I don't really know. I don't really know why that happens, like, at all. No, I. I am it's a no it's a mystery. Clue. Um, there's a curve jump, which I assume a lot of people found it by ca when doing casually, or at least tried if they didn't get it. There's a little, like a curve jump again here. Oh yeah, the cur the curve banana jump. I guess I, I'm used to calling it the banana jump, but same thing. Yeah, I, <laughs> I do it. Yeah, I do it too. There's a setup to make it consistent. Because it's a bit... It's way uh, sketchier than it looks. Like if you just try to yolo it, it's like it might take like ten tries. Yeah. Yeah, this is being played on the PC Saint. It's just a faster version. Lo load times yeah. are faster. You can do the quick save. Like it's a really comfy version to run. There's hotkeys and frame rate is per better and. Overall, honestly, the hotkeys is just like yeah. amazing. <laughs> so here we're coming up to uh, a guy, Brother Chen Barking. You you don't see it, but typically Lara has this uh, kind of interaction with him, and she's talking with him, uh, and he says something about how his father and Bartoli, uh, the main antagonist's father, got into it back in the day, and then the monks like blew up this cruise liner. And so there's beef between them. Uh, unfortunately, Brother Chen does not make it out alive. <laughs> um, and uh, I guess we'll we'll get to meeting the other monks uh, later in the game, at the monastery. Yeah, Barker Monastery is my favorite level. But I'm glad yeah, you're that... here because I don't know the story. <laughs> the story. <laughs> well, but sometimes with these older games, the story can be a bit uh, convoluted, strange. But yeah. Um, the, the main story, Lara is looking for the dagger of Xi'an, and uh, Bartoli is looking for the dagger as well, and it's kind of like uh, the race to see who gets it first. Yeah, um, on PC, it's really hard to watch the cutscene, all the FMVs. Oh, yeah. It really messes up your PC resolution, usually. Yes, so typically in the, uh, in the runs, we don't actually have the FMVs enabled at all make it a bit easier because it will like totally change the resolution of your screen and stuff yeah uh yeah talking about unfinished business and just golden mask and all of those I i'm sure footy has played them as well yeah i have done i haven't actually finished a single one of the dlcs or expansions casually oh oh yeah you just started right in on yeah uh, I like glitches run. I think Golden Mask is probably one of the hardest because there's so many enemies in that speed run. Yeah, it's just... There's this second level where there's a lot of Skidoo guys and you are basically just hoping to get through it without getting a run over. Yeah. It can take five hours and you're stuck on the second level. And it's only like a 10 minute run or something like that. Yeah, very short. Yeah, that section actually in this level cracks me up. Lara, suddenly Lara's on fire and people are like, oh my god, oh my god. Is she okay? And then, you know, <laughs> quick dip in the water, you know, and everything's fine. Don't worry about it. There's a cool fact. I actually tried that when I was a kid on PS1, and I couldn't manage to do it. I just don't know why. Wait, it's you tried so to do what? To do the, the fire trap. Oh, the fire trap, I tried to right. heal through it, but I just couldn't hit the heal key. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I gave up. You know, you get older and your reaction time gets a little bit better, and so here we are today. <laughs> So there I dropped on the right side, which you're not meant to. It's It lets you get on this area, on this room, earlier. Oh, 
I got this one as well. Nice. Oh yeah, that's actually really tough to do. Like, um, it's such a little thing, but uh, Footy was able to get, I guess, a better path towards this uh, section of the yeah, game. It's all about your, like, where you jump from. It's so. I wouldn't say it's really, really precise, but. Uh, that's why I like. That. Yeah, that's why I like glitchless because it is really about your movement and your style, uh, as opposed to glitched. It, it takes. Yeah. Uh, it takes time to learn the swag strats. Glitched has gotten so much harder now. Um, we have been running it with crit. <laughs> yeah, Definitely I have not. <laughs> I have not checked uh, on the glitched category in quite some time. But uh, the last time I was checking on it, it was getting pretty wild over there. So. Yeah, crit tied me. A week ago, and then I PB a few days ago. So, so uh, I guess Crit's gonna have to catch up now. Yeah, he almost got the one today. The last level, get bad RNG. Yeah, that's unfortunate. When you get bad RNG in Home Sweet Home, there's like really nothing you can do about it. Oh God. Uh, that guy was pretty mean. Another RNG situation. Sometimes yeah. that guy will not even shoot you at all, and sometimes he's real trigger happy. So uh, had to use a few meds there to save her. And sometimes the shotgun guys, when they kneel, they can like, it's not even a shotgun anymore. It's like a minigun and just destroys you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, because they're shooting like faster or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yes, Zimmer, this is glitchless. Uh, Maria Dory is another another one of those where we abuse the fire hitbox because it's a really long level casually and we really don't want to go through it. Yeah, this is a long. Yeah, I think this is a long level even in glitchless. Um, but yeah, casually this level is incredibly long, and it takes a lot of stamina just to do this level in general. This is probably my least favorite level to do uh, in both glitched and glitchless. Because this coming up here is scary for me. You gotta really watch Lara's health. Because uh, you can see, even though she's not on fire, she's still taking, like, the fire damage. It's that heat. Yeah. If you are too, like, too much in the middle, you will get set on fire after pushing or pulling. But... Yeah, you have to be, like, in a specific spot on the side of the box, like just, just far enough away from the fire to not get uh, caught on fire. Here I get asked, why do I look sideways? It's the... It's the time you're jump, because the, the, it's sloped downwards, like, you can't see it where you jump from, so... Yeah, like, if you remember that it's like three steps, sometimes you don't have to look, but it's just like a lot safer and more comfortable to look at her feet and yeah. make sure you're gonna get the jump. Otherwise, yeah, you can't see her feet and it's really scary. And it's like, it doesn't lose time. It's like one of those, I think, like, why not do it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Instead of just like risking the run. I used to be kind of stubborn about it. I was like, I'm not going to look at her feet. Forget about it. I, I can do this jump, but it's just much safer. And like you said, it doesn't waste any time. So <laughs> you might as well do it. Yeah. And before you ask, I'm sure Lara got a tetanus shot probably after these levels. <laughs> I have to say, sharks are not my favorite enemies in this level. So they can be really spooky. I'm gonna save before I get to water. Some, if you're really unlucky, one of them camps and insta eats you. Yeah, the the sharks. It, it's it's scary too because sometimes it, you're not always looking like at every position that they could be in, and then the shark will just come out of nowhere and it's like yeah, they can warp jump. a little bit because their yeah. hitbox is so big and the, the wall is pushing them around. But also, they look kind of cute on this mod because of the sweaters on them. Oh, we're gonna see sharks in little sweaters. Oh my goodness. 
so festive, so adorable. Yeah, this is my favorite main game, basically. I run all the classics. Yeah, like if you if you go to Footy's profile on speedrun.com, there is no shortage of Tomb Raider games, I assure you. <laughs> so then I guess that brings me to a question. Uh, what, what made you such a big fan of the Tomb Raider series, would you say, Footy? Because I played them when I was a kid. My parents played them. Oh, yeah. So you played and with just, your parents? Yeah, I played them. Played the games with them and then... Like four years ago, I f randomly found. I was playing casually. And I found a glitchless run. And I was like, oh, that looks cool. <laughs> I know the game. I'll try. And then I realized I wasn't good. <laughs> but I kept going. <laughs> yeah. Basically, by accident. And I had injuries, like knee injury, which made I couldn't do any sport. So I just. I was like, why not try it? So you think that's kind of what got you into speedrunning in general, just being being home because of your yeah. injury? And then it didn't help because when that injury went away, I broke my ankle Aww. completely. So. <laughs> Goodness, how, how is your ankle doing these days? Uh, it's okay. I just need to use the support still after two years. Ah, uh, okay. Like if I do any sport because like I broke everything in it. So. No. May I ask how you did that? <laughs> uh, I was running to a car because I, I, we came from a shop with brother and then we were, for, I forgot something and I went, I wanted to go back. But I just ran to the car and fell over because it was Aww. slippery. Oh, yeah. Real unfortunate. Both injuries. Not even sport related. Was it the same ankle? No, I broke my knee when I just turned. When oh, I was your home. knee! I misheard yeah, you. Yeah, got stuck said... on a carpet and then just popped. Oh my gosh, that sounds awful. This is second last water level. Oops, I want to get this met actually. So I have to use the backup. Which one? Which one is this diving area? Living quarters. Living quarters. I always mix up the names of everything because some of the scenery just looks so similar. <laughs> living quarters. So uh, if you can imagine the life here in living quarters. Coming up is like another one of those uh, fire hitbox kind of jumps where Footy will have to uh, be very careful where he steps and lands in this upcoming section. Yeah, there's a visual I use to jump from, and then you land on the corner, and then from there you just do a standing jump. Yeah, like once you get the uh, the feel for the positioning, it can't. It's not too bad, but still the scary. Same actually for the shotgun guy. Oops. Um, because shotgun guy can position really badly that he will block me, and then the barrel just runs me over. Oof, yeah. Like, that's the hardest part. It's like, it's blind. Blind. Yeah, you can't, you, there. you can't see too well when you're, like, headed into that section. Yeah. So now we've got uh, the ever-exciting box pushing. Gotta include that in the glitchless category. <laughs> yeah. Tomb Raider 4, if you ever want to see glitchless and a lot of block pushing, that will have it. There's one part in the middle of the run where you push and push planets for five minutes. Oh my gosh. That's a... I, I don't know what's worse, that or every cutscene that you have to watch in uh, Chronicles. <laughs> I would do the planet puzzle. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Chronicles is a is a slog. Yeah, Chronicles is a is a massive mess. Like uh -huh. glitch run, for example, is like forty one minutes or something now, and uh, it has like twenty minutes of cutscenes <laughs> or something like that. 
Plitz is 140-ish. And uh, it's a bad one, bad one as well. It has probably 40 minutes of cutscenes. It's, it's not <laughs> so enjoyable, we'll, really. So what we're saying is that we're very lucky that in this speedrun we can uh, skip all the cutscenes if we want yeah. to. <laughs> <laughs> because for some reason the, the devs change their minds a little bit about that later down the line. And somehow this one fire is... Is there no fire in this mod? No, there is no. Yeah, sometimes on there's like... On a normal game, there's a fire underwater. And it's just like burning underwater. Yeah. <laughs> unexplainable fire. I actually haven't realized that one on this one. <laughs> they fixed it. But let's see, did they decorate the eel? No, they didn't. I think this is the only jump scare in this game. It still um, scares. Cold. It still scares me. Like every time I'm about to come up to this section, I'm like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and we are using the late grab mechanic in this level again at the end to skip the the pool area. If you're meant to fill it with water and go to an, like an extra area on this level, but we completely oops, can skip here. You can jump over this water, I just missed it up. This section here in Glitchless, I don't know why, but forever, whatever reason, I just have such a hard time with it. Like, uh, so you have to be quick about it or the floor will collapse there. And if it does collapse, then you have to kind of like stop for a second and like, gather yourself and your things together and then like try to get back up on the slope uh. yeah <clears throat> there's so many times i just went for a glitch and let's grab and then I'll <laughs> let's go back so i'm gonna save here there's a visual i'm gonna jump the next one and that's based on for this jump Nice. nice, very nice. That's not an easy jump to get, uh, just going for it, so well done. It's, uh, it's like one of those jumps similar to, I guess, the chandelier jump in Bartoli's hideout, where you have to yeah. typically set it up to kind of, like, get the position okay, and gonna... stuff like that. I I missed this one. Yeah, this, this, this might work out in your favor, though, just because of I the extra med pack. Yeah. yeah. There's a curve jump. Uh, if you make it first try, you don't have to deal with the flamethrower guy. But I would kill it anyway on a marathon because I need to get on this area later, and I have no idea what kind of RNG I get. And yeah, in Calypso, like it... it's like eighty percent of the time you get barbecued. Yeah, if you don't kill that flamethrower guy, uh, it can be very scary towards the end of this level, uh, as Footy said, because he's very, like, sporadic. You don't know if he's going to be close to you or what. I'm doing these jumps to skip, like, probably half of the level. Yeah, this is, I think, really another one of those long ones, casually. Yeah. There's a lot of like these cool chumps. This next one is something I never could pull off. In I when still I was a kid. can't. I still can't pull that jump off like that. Like <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe I should retry it. Give it a try again. I always climb up from the back of that uh, thing and then slide down. The thing with that is it triggers another flame throw guy. Uh, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know that actually. It triggers. A, I'm pretty sure it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, but it triggers on the where the pool is when you go down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense Maybe. because I have gotten barbecued there. Yeah. <laughs> if you're really <laughs> unlucky, you get like instantly shot. And one of my favorite sequences coming up, if I can do it. The, the the it's kind of like a stylish drop down. Is that what you mean? Yeah, it's it looks kind of clean. 
Yeah, see, this is another thing that we we're kind of talking about with Glitchless specifically, is it's just there's a lot of really cool movement tech. And so Footy's going to try to show off some of that now. First fail. Not bad. But it's Don't like work. falling with style uh, <laughs> to me. Yeah. And like the key thing is to not lose a lot of health. Um, you can take one club guy hit for this next drop. Uh -huh. Yeah, you need a lot of health here because uh, Lara takes a significant amount of damage when she falls there. Yeah. So if you take like shotgun hit or something like that, two hits from enemy, it's basically a wasted med and it really hurts. Yeah, and it makes us cry. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, I don't want to waste the med. So there's another really unlucky part where shotgun guys can actually shoot from the ground through the wall and just, you can't do anything. You just have to hope that they won't shoot at you. I don't know how, but they can. That is a, t a tricky one, always, for me. Why am I? I'll, I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I refuse to climb up normally. I know. Every time I climb up normally, it feels like the climb up of shame or something. So here, I guess Footy is going to open the door first, just because uh, if we wait too long, these enemies are going to be like swarming us. So the idea is to get in, get out, make, make the pickups, and then all these guys will kind of funnel into this room, hopefully, and then Lara can yeah. uh, get out of there. Two shotgun guys as well. Yeah, it's, it's pretty scary. There's a lot of enemies here. And I've already had a fair share of uh, bad enemy placement. Yeah, they've not been kind to you in this run so far. <laughs> yeah, I think three, like, extra meds used already. So I'm picking every backup I can. <laughs> well, you can get the one in uh, Tibet. Uh, if you run the guy over with the skidoo, he drops like a, that little small. Yeah, that's small my, like, that's like... Backup. Yeah. The backup of the backup. The backup of the backup. <laughs> there you go. This is one of my favorite sequences where you're like falling down the, all the decks. You get to see like the whole side of the boat. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh, the grenade launcher is a very festive red. Love that. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I'm going to save here. Lara can aim randomly the further guy, and then the first one will shoot me if I'm very... Yeah, sometimes these guys, like, I feel like for the most part, these two flamethrower guys are pretty well behaved, but sometimes you can just get horrendous RNG and they're just like all over the place. Yeah, it's just... The game doesn't have too much RNG, but when it's th when it hits you, then... Yeah, <laughs> then it hits you pretty hard, yeah. Already challenging game, hitting you with even more hard, complicated RNG. Uh, so yeah, Footy's doing kind of a trigger skip there, I guess. That's still yeah. considered glitchless because you're not really glitching it out. It's just that those uh, other snow snowballs, big snowballs, won't uh, roll yeah. down. It's just going around the trigger instead of going like through yeah. some corners or something. Gotta make a pretty big jump over the canyon. Very nice. Now we got Favorite a little, uh, yeah, this little game. Christmas, little Christmas music coming up. <laughs> Just hope I, uh, I'm not too tired for this kiddo. Aw, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> it'll be okay. 
it's like it's one of those things like you never want to interrupt the song but sometimes you're like oh I've, I've gone too far i need to do the record scratch and save real quick i actually didn't know that you can pull those are pushable blocks oh yeah like, yeah until i saw a speed run or playing casually and doing it and i was like wow <laughs> i always did it speed run away when i was a kid So I, I collect 10 grenades the whole run, that's the goal, 10 or yeah. 12 depending later levels, but But we need 10 for, for the end. Yeah. yeah. I pick up uh, extra, do you pick, do you do the pick up and bar uh, barking outside the window? No. Uh, okay, I pick that up just for the extra um, later in floating islands when Everything is scary. <laughs> <laughs> so actually right here in this little corridor, um, Footy has to like kind of slow up on the, the, I guess the gas or whatever in this skidoo, yeah. because if you go too fast, uh, the, I don't know, the, the skidoo will explode and it's not pretty. Yeah, I, it's, it's like uncontrol uncontrollable sometimes. Yeah. Like, skidoo can just randomly jump in the air and just, Explode out of nowhere. <laughs> Santa Croft, I like that. <laughs> that jump skips the need for the key. Yeah, typically you have to get like a key to drop this bridge to like go over there, but uh, it's one of those situations where if you just make a jump at a particular angle, then you can get up there and skip all of that. So that's nice. And this pickup is on a timer. Uh, you don't want to waste too much time. There's a skidoo guy coming, and uh, they are yeah. evil. They he, he's drain pretty your aggressive. Health. Oh yeah, they will drain your health so fast, and uh, that's a fast one. You gotta <laughs> you gotta pull. So the key for this level is basically you hold the boost key all the way, except when you. Uh, come come this way on this tunnel the first time otherwise otherwise you just boost oh you skipped the medi yeah i should be fine he's gonna go for it <laughs> and i'm gonna do a little slower strap but safer no risk of exploding <laughs> uh, there's another way of coming here but if you I miss find, the platform, you explode. I so. find that it's, I always just try to get it right on the corner and it's like rare to explode, but yeah, safe strats in, in this situation, definitely better. One thing I will say a difference in uh, Tibet, Tibetan foothills here is the skybox is a bit different. Um, I kind of like this one better. Yeah, to me, it looks like it's like a northern light or something. Yeah, I think actually this skybox does appear in um, Golden Mask. Uh -huh. But don't quote me on that, but I think it does. I have no idea. <laughs> uh -huh. This pickup is just for safety um, later in the game. I just need to get lucky. Uh -huh. Well, rather, I, I should say I, I need to get not unlucky. Because there's a way monks kill one of the enemies under the table and I cannot pick the Uzis. Oh, yeah. And they are just stuck there. That's like a super freak accident when it happens. It's just like... Ah. <laughs> and here's... I'm trying to get him... Yeah, nice. Yeah. There's a certain movement you do or pathing to get this kiddo guy to do this this kind of pathing, so you get like a fast uh, skidoo as well. We used to do a sl little slower, I think half a year ago, or something like that. Th that I can't guy really on remember the... who figured that one out. Yeah, that guy can be pretty scary, um, especially when Lara's just like not on a skidoo herself. <laughs> what are these kiddos? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
You know what I feel like with this Christmas mod? Missed opportunity would be to put like the the bag of presents on the back of the skidoo. <laughs> So right so now, Matt. Lara is... Oh, yeah, you're gonna... Sorry, explain this. Uh, oh, no! <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the, sometimes those guys don't... Out. Yeah, sometimes those guys don't spawn. Um, but what he's I having to do... Jump up. <laughs> you can jump, like, on the directly on the right. I missed the block completely. Uh, the drop into the water there can be a little bit scary too. You have to, Footy has to do like a late grab uh, just to make sure Lara actually lands in the water because surprisingly enough, it is fairly easy to to kill her there. <laughs> yeah. So now we are in uh, Barking Monastery and uh, we're looking for a little object called the, the Seraph and some prayer wheels we'll need to, to get that. Oh, well, we got the Seraph. We're going to need that to get to, um, sorry, Catacombs of the... Italian, which is the next level, yeah. So we need some prayer wheels uh, here. Nope, don't do that. I think I'm dead. No, I'm not. Oh, very nice. I did the exact same thing yesterday. This is kind of another one of those curved jumps. Uh, can be a bit weird at times to do. It's simple, but... I don't know why. It's uh, having, giving me some issues. You can do it without a grab as well. Yeah, like you can. You can. That's um, going too hard on it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just a little bit safer to do the grab, kind of like yeah. I guess, uh, like in Venice. I need to check my meds after the ladder just to make <laughs> sure. Well, you could pick up the meds um, here too, like uh, if you go by the door on your way to the little trap door, like the last prayer wheel, uh, the monks will fight those mercs, but it could end up bad also. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it really can. And the game can crash at the same time. Yeah. That, that's the game usually... really doesn't deal well with enemies, like when there's like 20 enemies. Yeah, yeah. Even sometimes, sometimes it's a risk I, I'm willing to take. <laughs> <laughs> I have one out of five. I should be fine, actually. Oh, okay, nice. Well, you have one uh, small, five large? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's excellent. I would say uh, the jump over the boulder is a bit style strats. You don't have to wait for it, but um, uh, you don't, you know, you, you do if you're being extra safe, so, whoa. They really decorated the pool out with these uh, flashing, <laughs> rotating Christmas images. Okay, let's hope I am. I'm gonna save here because there's a weird thing happening in this game sometimes. You get stuck on the ceiling. Yeah, this is sort of like a sequence. Um, and it's it can be kind of tricky if you're getting like a bad jump. Yeah, like there's a little bumps on the ceiling and sometimes you get stuck on them and sometimes you don't. And yeah, but that was good. consistent. Yeah, that was, that, that was good. Didn't get hit by the clang clang doors. Yeah. And be careful with the monks. Don't shoot at them or they will be angry. For some reason, I thought there was a trigger skip for one of these mercenaries, but... Maybe I'm just thinking of glitched. Uh, the trigger tile is on the... Oh, why are you doing this, monk? Please fight this guy. Why is this happening? Come on, guy. You really don't want the monk to die here. Like You want the monk to take care of the mercenary, uh, if at all possible. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, um, actually, monks can lose to that guy. That specific kind of enemy. Mm. Uh, they can only die to the uh, auto pistol guys, which I killed. But sometimes the enemy still targets me and Monk just goes for a holiday. <laughs> yeah, he did all right there. Oh. oh, the Monk had a little bit of a glitch going up. Okay, there. I'm actually just getting like every block. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, 
the monks are like, listen, you know, it's the holidays. Why don't you stay in the monastery for a little while? Like, spend a little time. So let's see, how many prayer wheels does that leave us with? We need uh, two more, three more. Hold on. Uh, this is the first one, right? <laughs> You need five. You this need five. Prayer. Okay, I'm getting ahead of I, I, myself. I, I, for some reason, thought you picked up two already, and I'm like, how many more do I need? No, so we need... I think uh, it's one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I should know, but it's like... I, I'm just following, like, certain... <laughs> it's like it's like autopilot at, at to, uh, to a point. You're just like, hmm, I know I have to pick up more prayer wheels. I don't really know how many more, but we just need yeah. to do that. <laughs> That's what happens when you are just try to out of the palette and not focus too much. Like, I mean, focus, but not like too much pay attention. Yeah, when I get familiar. Yeah. Uh, this was PS1 era, definitely. 1997 was. But this particular version uh, that Footy is running today is, uh, in fact, the PC version. And you know, I haven't checked, but uh, I know there are sales going on right now. Uh, uh, so it's possible this you could find this game for very cheap right now. <laughs> yeah, they're usually like one one dollar or one euro each. Yeah. Or some so, of them are bun bundles, like ten dollars, and you get all the games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, so the Uzis that uh, Footy was talking about earlier are not under the table, which is excellent. Yeah. Yeah, this is my favorite level out of any Tomb Raider. Oh wow, like favorite level of all time. Yeah. Wow. It is pretty cool. Yeah, comfy monastery. I like it. Where's the place? I'd say um, can be scary, but some stylish jumping coming up here. Um, it's very easy to get caught on like the side of these. Uh, I don't know sections. Of the, yeah, the burners. Like it's easy to get stuck on the little metal pieces, if you want to call them that. So yeah. have to kind of time the jumps right. And I'm only picking one one of these gems um, because we're doing a. Tricky jump soon, which skips the trigger for the pool later, so it's it stays uh, empty. Because when I go on the roof he area here, it it goes empty, and when you normally go back the way you came from, it fills up again. But because we skip going back the normal way, it stays empty and. Uh, we don't actually. Oops! Don't push it. Do <laughs> no, we didn't see anything. Lara's just getting that that workout. She's got to oh. prep for uh, the the jump coming up. So yeah. it takes a lot that of was strength. Just practicing some pulling and pushing. They work <laughs> in the game. Yeah, it's just demonstrating. <laughs> and the jump is coming soon. Here we go. Prayer wheel. That's second one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't count. We can't uh -huh. quick math. <laughs> but probably Let's just say it's five after we get to the end. <laughs> yes. So this jump is really, really cool. Um I don't know if what do you want to explain how you're about to do this? I use the exact same setup that I did in offshore rig. Um, with buffers, you just have to aim the corner. Hold on, one, two. And then you need to grab 
Uh, yeah, very nice. Yeah, you have to do the late grab to get in the window. It can be yeah. a tricky one. Uh, again, you can it's do one it without of... buffers. But it's just... Yeah. I but it's just try it five times. <laughs> it makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. You know, Footy, I actually forgot that was a buffer jump in general, and I have been doing it without buffers or like <laughs> trying to. So thanks for the reminder, I guess. You can use like, you know, the flare strat buffers on Offshore Rig? Y yeah, yeah. You can use that one as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just the. Uh... And it's been a while since I even have thought of that. So Footy has to fall with style here again to avoid uh, taking too much damage. So that's why he's doing the grabs uh, before he drops down. Very nice. Yeah. Now the spiky trap area, there's a cool sequence. This is actually coming up on one of my favorite sections of the game because I think when you get uh, this correct the first time it just feels so nice because uh the trap coming up is pretty dangerous looking yeah if you get trapped like between the swinging things you usually get, get killed oh yeah so to well, check i have this a set out. sequence here only issue is the monks sometimes push you and they really just ruins it They're on the same timer every time. Yeah. I, I'm always still, like, holding my breath at that section just because it looks so terrifying. You've got, like, the fire going and the, you know, spiky uh, balls swinging around and just, like, it's scary. The blades, oh, it's a, it's a pretty terrifying trap, so well done. It used to be one of the... I hate it the most when I started running this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it can be like, tough to yeah tough to understand the sequence at first. So it's like the most inconsistent. Every time, different outcome. I'm like, how do you do this? <laughs> A lot of things in this game is actually consistent. Oh, what are you? What? Are you, what? <laughs> <laughs> These months, they're really getting in the Christmas uh, spirit. <laughs> I'm gonna just save. Uh, sometimes monks can target an enemy, they can't reach, and that can cause a crash. So oh, okay. Fair. Only keyboard. That one should support mouse. Yeah. It's that old game. So how does that work on keyboard? Do you use the directional keys or... Yeah, I know keys. Use the arrow. So yeah, so Fuddy's using, I guess, the right hand to control her movement and left hand to do all the actions. Yeah, I use default layout, which the game gives you. There's a few modifications, but that's basically it's just a default. Yeah, I, I honestly can't imagine just trying to control her with the arrow keys. <laughs> like, I think my brain is just so used to like WASD. I don't know how you do it. So. <laughs> This is the only game I can do with arrow keys. Like any other game, no chance. Yeah. And I think really it just comes down to personal preference on what's, you know, easier. It's going to be whatever your brain is most comfortable uh, yeah. executing. <laughs> There's not really like, if you want to do a controller, you don't lose time to keyboard player. Yeah. It's just it's... what you find better and more yeah. comfy. Whatever's more comfy for you. So I think this is, in fact, the last prayer wheel. <laughs> so yeah. we, we can call this number five. I think this is one of the longer uh, levels in the glitchless category. Yeah, this is the longest one. The longest yeah. level, yeah. Oh, I wondered about that drop. 
Um, I felt like I was doing something wrong there, so you just confirmed that I was, in fact, doing something wrong. <laughs> So those mercenaries were pretty well behaved. That's good. Yeah. You are meant to actually go to the massive room, pull the lever and use the door to get out. Like that's like, I guess the intended way. But you can just yeah. use the same panel. Yeah, they didn't really think of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's that funny. Two enemies. It's funny like over, like to, to know the devs overlooked something like that when it's like, Okay, the exit's right there, but then they decide to put a huge door, I guess, to make it more, I don't know, grand or something. Yeah, I, there's so many things in this game, like, they didn't really th think. This section, or this level, uh, is actually one of the shorter levels in the glitched category because of a glitch that was found a couple years ago where you can actually duplicate the prayer wheels. Um, I feel like everybody was really freaking out that day <laughs> because yeah. uh, it's a nice skip, but it is it is good to see Barking in, in most all of its glory, though. So. All right, moving on to uh, Catacombs. Gonna meet some new enemies here. Uh, yeah, gingerbread Yetis. Gingerbread Yetis. Oh gosh, I thought yetis were terrifying to begin with, and now I'm actually second guessing that because this is far more terrifying seeing gingerbread yetis. <laughs> you think they're sweet, but uh, oh no. And we'll be seeing a lot of yetis in the upcoming levels. <laughs> nice. So for this level, Footy needs to pick up, uh, I guess they're kind of ancient masks. Uh, those are going to be the keys to open, you know, certain doors in the level. So this will be the first one uh, that we pick up. Yeah. They're, they're pretty terrifying, in my opinion. I'll save here because when you do this drop down, the left part can position itself the way that when you go down, it pushes you over the edge and then you die. Mm, yeah. It's really rare, but like, kind of happen. Also Just... common. Rare yeah. but common. <laughs> Just one of those things that you know you have to be prepared for in case. So in this in this section, I feel like typically there are uh, some snow leopards that appear, but um, we yeah, there's to... six of them. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Only two of them triggers. So. so we um skip over some of those. That skips two, and then I actually com skipped four, I think total. I yeah, just don't even know where the first two, the trigger is. <laughs> yeah, you're so used to doing it, you just like forget where the triggers are to begin with. It gets, it gets to be normalized. So I would say based on uh, Footy's current health pack situation, I think we have a pretty good shot of it completing this run. It's not good though. Yeah, these yeah. guys weren't too too nice, but I mean, yeah, anything can happen, but... Uh, he has a med I really wanted, but he went so far away that I can't pick it up. <laughs> because the leopards are triggered. I'm trying to so... think if, if there's extra packs, because we were in a pretty good situation beforehand. Yeah, it is 4.19 a.m. here. So you can't really see it, but there's typically, I guess, up to four yetis in this area. That's what the screaming is all about. Uh, yeah. So, so some of these... set up here. Uh, this is like a... just try, hoping... I'm gonna pull this lever three times when I see yetis start running. So... Three, and then I sh roll, and I should get pushed into... Nice. 
Nice, yeah. That's not a new strat, but I would say it's one of the newer strats because otherwise you have to move the boxes and um, everything else. Now, there are two med packs down there. I don't know if you want to bother with those. No. Okay, yeah. It's just this next... Well, let's just say I'm going to be low on meds, most likely, in the last level. So, we might need to do some <laughs> extra shooting. <laughs> A little bit of extra shooting, yeah. Oh, okay, oh. that happened. That section is pretty scary just because it's, I her, don't know. For, her forward input still went through even though I didn't hold it. <clears throat> so this is another skip jump. Uh, precise curve. Very nice. Just skip like a water area. I'm gonna save another time on the way back. It's hard to jump. Even though it's just a forward jump, it's easier to miss. Nice. Sometimes you can clip on the corner and then drop down and then you die. Uh, okay, that's actually a much safer route than I was thinking. Uh, since you did the, you went back from the other side or the side that you came in from. Yeah. It's faster and safer. Just the leopards are not pushing you around. So, uh, because Footy had enough health, he was able to make that uh, drop down to the end of the level, and that brings us to Ice Palace. Uh, I, I guess they, they didn't get the memo that the bells were supposed to be silver. So here we are. We're gonna shoot some gold looking bills. <laughs> we have five large med kits. That's a sp special. You're supposed to lower these little platforms to shoot these bells. Well, you can just navigate through them using the springboards, clever ways. Yeah, it's pretty stylish. I like it. And actually, you can only see Lara's health when her weapons are drawn. So um, whenever or Footy takes... Yeah, or if it's like blinking, she's on the verge yeah. of death. So that's how you know how much health you have. Uh, or if you can make a jump like that one at the end of uh, Catacombs. I'm actually gonna do backup meds. Oh yeah, I forgot this one was here. And then I'm gonna do another one later on. So this section is cool. You don't actually have to pick up that mask at all. Um, it's just one of those things where if you step on the platform, uh, the, the next section... The door. Yeah, the next section will open up, so... A couple of little places in the game, like there and um, in Venice, I guess, that you can do that. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna take the med down here. I'm gonna get rid of this Yeti. All I have to do is just pick up a med later. Uh -huh. Or oh, the grenade in Floating Island. I just have to remember that. Is it in the, uh, before you do the really long jump at the beginning? Uh, the grenade launcher? Oh, I'm just trying to remember where the extra pickup is. Uh, it's at the end. The double on the staircase. Oh, right, right, on the staircase. Oh, okay, I was thinking that was a normal pickup, so I guess now I know. <laughs> and I can pick that med up, yeah. I've had some, um, like, um, so unlucky moments with enemies. Yeah. Um, so coming up, we've got more uh, gingerbread yetis, and uh, these ones can be a bit more, uh, I guess, aggressive in my opinion, because there's so many of them. It's like... Scary. Um, but it's good that the door was open there because weirdly enough, if you don't swim over that specific block that like the gong hammer is on, like that door won't open and it's very frustrating. Yeah, I've had that one. <laughs> yeah, I've had that happen. I'm just like, why? <laughs> 
It's like, I already picked it up. Isn't that enough? But weirdly enough, you can be on the wrong tile. I'm just trying to check my health. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like you'll have enough for the gong hammer or the, the conky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a new threat. I'm not sure if you have seen it for a chicken. Oh, I'm not sure if I have. Uh, I tried I'll to do the. Here. Oh, okay. Though... Are you gonna show it off? It's it's safe. I mean, I've never died to it, so I'll still say. But if you climb up on a certain spot and then just stay still here, it can't hit you for some reason. Oh, weird. Oh, and then he gets kind of stuck in that pattern. That's very nice, much quicker. Um, and the chicken is down. So here we're getting close. The The dagger is like right there, but it's just a little too out of reach. Uh, the game will kind of uh, trick you into to falling here into these traps. And so the quest for uh, the dagger kind of continues. Uh, this level takes eternity to ca like casually. Oh yeah, this is <laughs> this and is it's a... full of traps. Oh yeah, it's like, full of traps. So it's dangerous. Many. Like secrets in this level in particular is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. So there's a certain kind of, like you can do a curve jump here, unless you uh, do. Not enough steps here. Um, you can land on this slope and then backflip twist off on the bridge, which skips like 80% of the level. Yeah, otherwise you're basically falling into the waterfall and then uh, you're going down, down to the bottom layer of the level. And so this actually saves a significant amount of time. Uh, and to answer your question, this is a live speed run. Uh, we are all playing games from uh, the year 1997 today. Footy is running uh, Tomb Raider 2 Glitchless Christmas mod for us now, and uh, we are uh, just doing the 1997 theme. Oh, some of the camera angles in this game are, in fact, very terrifying, and it's very apparent in this level in particular. <laughs> Yeah, this is like one of the scariest ones, just because one missed jump just kills you. Yeah. Like everywhere spikes, walls coming. <laughs> it's just awful level. I I am not a fan of it. reason when you go through this little doorway the camera can like freak out and it goes outside and if you're not prepared it will throw you off oh gosh um, uh, the snow on the dragon is a bit jarring i was not expecting that <laughs> <laughs> There again, drawing guns, the game doesn't show what actually happened, then uh, you can instantly start moving. So I'm not exactly sure like how much health you need for this upcoming section, but this is kind of one of those weird uh, things that the game will let you do to go through the spikes without actually dying. Yeah. This is slightly faster than actually climbing the first ladder I did. Like normal way, all the way up. Yeah. And 
cool thing. If you miss this jump and you don't grab, you don't actually die. There's a there's a block. Somehow there's a no death trigger, so you can just. Oh yeah, it. there is like that weird invisible block in the water or in the yeah. lava. I completely forgot about that until you mentioned it. <laughs> It's really funny to see because Lara's just like standing on top of the lava and you're like, wait, why am I not dead? <laughs> so there's uh, I, there's like a certain amount of climb up here to make sure that you won't get hit by... Footy, can climb. we watch the cult ritual? Uh... I should be <laughs> fine, yeah. We can do that. Oh, yeah. But he's like, what are you saying, lady? You're kind of into the time. <laughs> yeah, we have plenty of time to uh, estimate. Oh, yeah. You're doing fine on the time, for sure. I have my life splits at the same time, so I can oh, okay. know where I'm going. Nice. <clears throat> so, you will see this. It's an oh. Atla. It's a Natla. <laughs> oh it's Natla. I was not expecting that at all. It's a skater boy as well from Tier 1. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are they all skater boy? Oh no, they're all different. <laughs> so they really did have a lot of fun with this. Oh my god, it's Winston. <laughs> <laughs> they really had a lot of fun with this uh, Christmas mod. As you can see, a couple of familiar faces from uh, other Tomb Raider games. <laughs> the Christmas cult. Ah, uh, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Let's just save here. So floating islands, uh, also one of my least favorite levels uh, I love it. <laughs> in speedrun. I, I don't mind the beginning, but the end of this level is incredibly frustrating. So we'll see how Putty handles it. There's a really tricky jumps at the beginning here, few. And uh -huh. this specifically is like, it's all on you. But the second one is on you and you just rely on enemy placement. So yeah. it might take a few tries. Yeah, you can get a bit unlucky uh, if the barbecue skewers are going out full force. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's a really precise jump you have to jump really late and also grab really late so you can reach the max distance yeah i would say it's probably a little a little bit similar to barking but oh very nice yeah and the platforms are weird in this uh level i feel like they're a bit longer in some places like the one that you just jumped over is a bit weird and yeah but you you got it no problem you're doing very well this jump is a max distance jump so i'm gonna do it slower which means like if you don't set it up you have to grab really late <laughs> and you can still miss it it's just i don't know why they put this few of them I actually like that that story. It's like uh, when he got locked in the freezer one too many times, and that's what made him decide to uh, join the cult. <laughs> yeah, just white yeah, last level. Home sweet home. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna go backwards here. Uh, like in a in a real run, I would go forward. But the jump is so precise, like, you have to jump on the edge of it. If you jump early, you can't grab it. And if you jump too late, she doesn't jump, obviously. I, I've, I've given up on the zip line because I always get hit anyway. <laughs> yeah, the zip line is slower, and it's just, yeah. you take always damage, so it's not really good. I have actually good health for the next drop down of the zip line. 
this this part can be a little funny, but uh, you just kind of got to jump over the roof, uh, kind of at a particular yeah. angle to, to get over there. Yeah, so. you don't want to jump too much outside because you fall down. Yeah. Like, you overshoot it and then you die. So you want to jump like correctly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't want to. <laughs> Always a little too scary or careful. I need to grab here because this version is different than the other one. Where you do need to grab. Uh -huh. So we're kind of trying to avoid one of the um enemies here that's floating around and so Lara's making a nice dive uh, on the escape here. That jump okay. is only reachable with very late grab or swan dive. Oh. And I remember not knowing when I was a kid that swan dive gets you like extra distance basically. Yeah. So I, I, I... was not sure where to go. <laughs> yeah, it is a bit confusing. I like the swan dive though. You don't see it too often yeah. in the this run, but uh it's pretty cool. Animation. And actually, in the Christmas mod, I do kind of like what they did with the lava on the walls. It's like that ice blue. It's like yeah. super hot. Pretty cool. I'm gonna skip the cage area completely yeah if this you is... miss this jump you're so screwed especially i because i i don't have meds <laughs> yeah so this is a section uh of floating islands that i don't like uh you have to kind of just Stand in particular spot to make sure everybody dies quickly, efficiently, um, and these guys can really push Lara into a bad uh, situation. Death, if you're not careful. But Hoodies looks like he's got a good handle on it, so that's excellent. Okay, I need to pick up the grenades. I'm gonna actually. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot the uh, guy who has the large med. Just to get the next. Don't run away, please. Like, come, come back. On. Oh, well, I give up on you. <laughs> he disappeared. He's like, you're not getting my med. That's mine. I got it for Christmas. Yeah, like, I need to be careful. That guy, like, the statue guy, will spawn if I go, like, too. Place. Yeah, too far. And. I should be fine. Yeah, I'm more than fine. And now he's back. Well, he's back with the uh, Windows mouse cursors here. Yeah, <laughs> mouse cursors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this section can be a little scary too, just because. Oh no! Now you have him throwing the clickers at you. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, I should be fine. Um. Two, but the three. And then oh, two. nice, nice. And then three. Or two, four, actually. <laughs> yeah, this can be a pretty long section to get up. So, Footy just taking a few shortcuts here. Very nice, and now we are uh, out of the, the hot zone and into the dragon's lair. So we think you have enough health packs for this. Yeah, I have definitely more than enough. Okay, I'll save cool. anyway after the kill. But... Yeah, there's just a lot of enemies in this room and you have to pick up uh, Mystic Plaque to open that door and uh, yeah. Save here. Like I had, I think I had seven large med kits. So. 
Oh wow, that's that's a lot. Yeah. The they game like to... gave me a little break after the <laughs> RNG. <laughs> nice. So this so... dragon one is allowed, so just a warning. Oh yeah, and also the dragon might look a little different to some of you. <laughs> uh, Rudolph, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you feel bad uh, defeating the dragon like this, but here we are. I guess yeah. Laura is just going in on the Christmas. The it's 10 Christmas grenades experience. behind the pillar and that's it. Yeah, and you stand behind the pillar just to get the dragon in a good position to where it doesn't uh, want to move around too much, so... So that was good. So we have time for, I think, to kill a Vini in the freezer or so. <laughs> Can do that. Oh yeah, we definitely have the time. Lara swapping the classic blue robe for a red one. Yeah, this is way cooler. <laughs> it kind of matches the theme a bit more, like uh, all the menus are red and yeah. Temple of Xi'an has a lot of red colors. So this uh, is the final level in the game and, uh, you know, you kind of think everything's good, you know, defeat Rudolph. Uh, and then it seems like, you know, the enemies are back. They, they're they not going to stand for it. So they're here at Lara's home trying to steal the dagger from her. And, uh... Oh, this is unlucky, man. Why? What is happening with these enemies today? <laughs> he went in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was tired. You know, it had been a long travel day for him. And, uh, just need to use the facilities for a moment. <laughs> but yeah, every human enemy is... Uh, Vinny, Winston. Yeah, it, <laughs> I think that's such a funny thing they added to the mod. And now that I know that Winston was part of the actual cult ritual, it, it's even funnier that all of the enemy enemies in the final level are Winston in this mod. Yeah. <laughs> My PB is 132 something, 30 something like that. Oh, nice. Someone asked me. Okay. I'll just take... Yes. I hope that one guy doesn't roll me too badly. Oh. I don't get this one. Oh, this is a very strange situation. <laughs> like, I'm getting pushed left and right. Maybe, uh, the garden med pack, perhaps? I should be fine. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, after you kill a certain number of enemies um, in this level, the final boss will spawn. Uh, and it's a big boy with uh, okay, two big old guns. In. Now we can go for the freezer. Yeah, let's see uh, Let's see if we can get lock Winnie, buff Winnie, extremely buff Winnie in the freezer. Yeah. <laughs> He's a little bit faster uh, moving than the one with the tray. <laughs> maybe I got it. Maybe he's poking through the door, but... Hey, you know what? <laughs> His feet were in the freezer. I think it counts. Yeah. <laughs> the timer comes when Lara's, uh, Lara shoots. Don't yeah, the screen will go enough? black and the timer will end. No, GG's. GG's. Gosh, well done, Footy. That was a trip. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much yeah, for, for running that. <laughs> it was a good one. Some unlucky moments, but it was fun. Yeah, it was a good one. And uh, again, this was the first time uh, Two Murder, Two Glitchless has been on GDQ in any capacity. So I really appreciate you staying up late and uh, showing us Two Murder, Two and, and the Christmas mod. That was really fun. Um, you got any uh, final thoughts, words that you'd like to bestow upon our uh, viewers tonight, Footy? 
Not really. I'm too tired. <laughs> He's too tired. All right. Well, then I'll bestow you with I'm some final. <laughs> I'll be it's bestow really you with some final thoughts. Uh, if you enjoyed this run, please make sure you follow Footy here on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash f o o t i. Uh, Footy does a lot of Tomb Raider speed runs, like all kinds. So, um, uh, recently you are doing Tomb Raider Two glitched a lot. Yeah, I've been grinding it and still Yeah, doing. so if you want to see this run again uh, in the glitch category, Footy will be uh, working on that. And uh, yeah, that's that's Tomb Raider 2 uh, glitchless, everybody. But uh, before we break, I just want to quick remind everyone that AGDQ 2021 online is less than two weeks away. Uh, from January 3rd through the 10th, we will be having a week-long marathon benefiting the Prevent Cancer Foundation, and prize submissions are open right now until December 26th for that, so go to gamesdonequick.com to find out more. And a big thank you to all of our Twitch subscribers. This show and other Hotfix content is sponsored by those subscriptions, and it is very much appreciated. So um, again, Fodi, thank you so much for uh, being here. Thank you for having me. And uh, coming up next, we have Star Wars Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2, so don't go away. Welcome back to Time Capsule here on the Game Stone Quick Twitch channel, everyone. The show where we travel back in time to your favorite years in gaming and speedrun our way through popular or influential games released in a particular year. Tonight, we are stuck on the year 1997, and I have speedrunner Anastra here with me for Star Wars Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2, as well as Covert Muffin and Piper here for commentary. Welcome. How are you all? Doing good. Excited to play the game. Nice. Now, Anastra, how long have you been running this game? Uh, probably a few months now. Uh, it's been fairly recent. I wouldn't say a full year yet. Nice. Um, well, if you are ready to get going, we can totally start the timer whenever you are comfortable. Sounds good. We'll start the timer in three, two, one. Best of luck. Good luck. Thank you, thank you. All right, so in this first level, uh, we're just going to be trying to get all the force points. I mean, sorry, uh, all the secrets to get a force point. Um, and doing that will let us get for speed as early in the run as possible so we can go fast, so we can beat the game fast. So yeah, if I'm running around and kind of into certain places and doing things non-linearly, it's just getting all the secrets so I can get for speed as soon as possible. Yeah, and there, there's six uh, secrets in the level. This is the, the fastest level you can get all the secrets in between the, the first three levels because the first level you can get four speed is level four. Yeah, and so in this particular section, you're gonna see Anastra come back to this elevator multiple times and it's in order to just rock a bunch of secrets. So basically what a secret is, is it's just like a small location. And once your hitbox exists in it, it triggers the secret in it and it solves it. Yep. It'll, yeah. So right there, another secret area, and then just coming back to catch this elevator on the way back up. Yeah, and you were seeing him kill all these enemies beforehand while he was waiting for the elevator elevator the first time. It was just so that they don't block him on his way back and he catches it before it goes off without him. Yeah. The other thing too is we're going to be going for the dark side ending. This game has a dark side and a light side <laughs> ending. So every now and then all the NPCs that are non-hostile, we will, we will unfortunately be killing uh, just to push towards the dark side because it is a faster ending than the light side. Yeah, and so as the Nostra is going to be going through this entire run, you're going to be noticing him walk at a diagonal. And this is just based on the physics engine of the game itself. Uh, it basically just combines the forward and sideways vectors when you're holding down both of the keys simultaneously, and that causes you to actually walk at a slightly faster speed. Yep. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, with, uh, four speed, when we get it fully leveled, uh, we get going at some pretty crazy speeds, and, uh, they can be lethal sometimes, but... <laughs> Open for the best. I hope so. For sure. And you may also notice that he's switching between first and third person a lot. Um, usually when we're running, it's easier to run at a diagonal, like Muffin was talking about. It's easier to do that in third person. And then first person is more like if you want to aim and shoot things, it's a lot easier than third person. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and like in an in Academy and Outcast, actually the targeting reticle for third person is actually bugged 
it's slightly skewed as to where it's supposed to be. So if you go into first person, it actually shows true. So it's interesting that this is also uh, for aiming. Using first person is slightly better in this game, too. Yeah. And it's interesting. The first uh, Dark Horses game was a lot more uh, like the first Doom game than it was this kind of third person game. Right. Yeah. So coming up here, we're going to be doing the first of a few TD jumps in the game. Uh, basically just going to be using a grenade to boost ourselves, try to get up a little higher in places we're not supposed to be. Uh, they can be pretty difficult, kind of finicky, but when they work out, they are pretty satisfying. So let's hope and good luck. Good luck. Yep, good luck. Yeah, so we're going to see Anastra use the secondary fire to lay down two TDs, and then he's going to try and time a really precise jump. Got it. Nice. Wow. Second try. That's Second insane. Try. Not bad. <laughs> that trick is a lot, lot more difficult than he made it look. That was very impressive. <laughs> so you also see him jumping uh, through this window. Normally, you have to go out and get a red key to open the the door to the side, but you can actually just drop in, open this door, and then get out without through the window. Another aspect of straight running, helping us beat the game faster. And then coming up here, the second TD jump, this one can be a bit more painful. Or I can get a first Oh time. my god! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> All right, not bad. That is and insane! That one. <laughs> yeah. it again. Um, I will TD it. Lots of shit nice. anyway, so it's fine. Oh man, I cannot believe you landed. That was so sick, dude. Uh, yeah. That's what I mean. Those TD jumps are so satisfying when they work out. Yeah. yeah, and that TD jump saves a lot of time because there's these like slow moving boxes that you walk across, and having to wait for those takes a lot of time. But if you get that TD jump, you can skip that. And then you also saw him jumping across the, the gaps to go towards the end. It just saves like a minute or so. And then coming up here, usually in the uh, faster, you know, world record kind of contending runs, there is another TD jump that you can do here, but we'll just do safe strats this time around. Yeah, the, the safe strats let you get extra shields and TDs. Uh, the, the harder strat lets you get this elevator cycle as it's going up, so you don't have to wait for it to go down two times yeah. a minute. It saves maybe 30 or so seconds. We will be patient and wait for the elevator. Yeah, it's good, especially in a game like this, where like tricks, especially like TD jumps and stuff like that, you're kind of putting yourself at risk to NPCs because in every single map, the NPCs always have the same spawning locations. They, they always start in the same spot. However, um, as the level progresses, uh, the enemies can like move around and just wander around. So, Anastra reacting to all of these NPCs as he walks through doors is completely improvisation every single time he comes into a game like this. So, very impressive to see so far. He's been doing a really good job of handling those. Thank you. Once nice. we get a little later in the game and we get some uh, force going, TD jumps are pretty scarce, but. Coming up on another one here. A little swim. This level is fairly short. I don't know much to it. Nice. Nice. Yeah, the, the TD jumps jumps and that skip a whole bunch of like puzzles you have to do in this level and it makes it really short. Yeah. This level is uh Father's definitely short. Ouija has got to be in here. And we got Ouija down here. And now we have four speed. Level one, so we're not going super fast. But... Oh yeah, we also have a lightsaber now, and we yeah. use that a lot to just kill enemies uh, in range. How does the uh, the the force meter work, Piper, in this game? Like, does it regenerate over time, or do you have like a set number of force abilities you can use in a level? It's so uh, like when you get when you first get 
force powers, you have like a certain amount of mana that you have, and as you progress through more levels, your force mana increases. So in this level, you can't like spam force speed the whole entire way, but as you progress through the rest of the game, uh, pretty much you have enough force to pretty much not have to worry about it. Which is always nice. So in this level particularly, we have to kind of manage in what places we use for a speed to get the best use out of it. <clears throat> Didn't miss that jump. Nice. R rarely happens. All right, now we're coming up on a TD jump that's going to utilize not only the TD, but for speed. So... Oh, almost. Oh, that was close. Very close. There we go. Nice. Oh. Nice. Yeah, that trick pretty much makes getting all the, the force or all the secrets in level one worth it. So yeah. it saves up a bunch of time. And then coming up here, we're going to be doing a death warp to finish this level. Uh, there's a couple of them in this game. And yeah, we're going to be dying and then clipping through a wall to hit the end cutscene trigger. And yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty wild in this game. Um, in, a, in a lot of different games, including Outcast, there are various tricks with getting somebody to hit the end trigger of the mission, and then that's just enough, even if you didn't do most of the objectives, etc. So this one in particular, uh, Nostra is going to be just placing TDs in a specific spot, blowing them up, and the explos explosion just shoves his dead corpse through the solid door, uh, causing the mission to end. There we go. Nice. Just want to take a little bit more damage to make sure I got it. And then pausing and unpausing will show this black screen, which will confirm if you got it or not. Yeah, and you just wait for the cutscene to play out. Okay. And then you get two more four stars, and now we have level three four speed. And auto already you can kind of tell going quite a bit faster. Level three four speed. This level here yes. is also pretty fast. Sometimes if you run into, I don't know exactly how it works, but if you run into an enemy near a wall too fast, their gun will just go turbo fire and they will zero to 100 you. In very little time and you will instantly die, which sucks, but. Yeah, for sure it happens when you least expect it. Yeah, so a lot of the, the difficulty and the complexity of this game is literally working through these hallways with force speed. Uh, because unlike Jedi Knight Outcast and Jedi Knight Academy, the uh, the games that come after Dark Forces 2 in the series, um, force speed actually speeds you up. And the way the game decides sort of damage that your player model takes from hitting solid objects is based on your overall velocity. Um, so with force speed, it, if Anastra doesn't take a corner well enough, you can actually just dole out a ton of, of like basically fall damage, uh, as you can think of it, by running into a wall. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Here comes like a nice little skip that skips a big chunk of the level because you have to get up to this section of the, the level. And just jumping there saves a whole bunch of time. Rocket jump on that. Oh yeah, we also picked up the, the rail detonator, so it's also a pretty much just a rocket launcher that lets us blast places. Missed that jump, so we'll just wait for it to come back up. Which I just discovered you could do today. <laughs> Better late than ever, I suppose. Yeah, speed running. <laughs> it's like so important in like marathon settings, especially um, like just being able to bust out backup strats or be able to adapt to learning new backup strats on the fly. So it's very impressive that you were able to, to adapt that quickly. Nicely done. Thank you. And here going into this level, uh, we have a bit of a boss fight coming up. Uh, I'm going to want to keep as much shield as possible. There are some backup shields to get as well. Um, but right here, I'm counting saber swings. So we can count for how long it takes for this elevator door to open. So we can try to take as little damage as possible out there waiting. We're also going to get Force Jump, 
uh, while we're in this cutscene here that we can't skip. Uh, so yeah, force jump will also be utilized for some rail death jumps, concussion rifle jumps, stuff like that. He is ready to prove himself to his master at any cost. This boss fight isn't too bad. Just gotta hit him three times. We'll try to get a. Sometimes he'll jump on the start. So just like that, we'll get a free hit off. Again, and done. Nice, Boss good fight. Move. And grab these backup shields. And those shields are very important for this part because we're going to be doing my favorite skip in the game. We're going to open that door, which we can't normally unless we push it. Hit it like that. We're going to rail dead jump out here. Oh, yes. Oh, I love and, this uh, level. Alright. So here. If I can get it. Yeah, he's, he's doing a rail dead force jump around this wall. There's actually an invisible wall in the front of the wall, so he's actually like maneuvering Fair. around it. Yeah, which can be a bit tricky. Then hopefully not get shot by that. All right, this is my favorite trick in the game. Yeah, so he's putting down sequencers, and they're pretty much just like proximity mines, and he's using the rail debt, and he's killing himself, and launching towards where the end of the level is. There we go, got it. <laughs> and then just shooting our, <laughs> shooting our dead body over the level end trigger, and then a level cutscene will play that we obviously can't see, um, and then we move on. Yep, so just like level 4 when he blasted himself through the, the door and triggered the end, this is pretty much the same concept. Your corpse can trigger the end of levels and explosives can move them. And now you just wait for it to play out and it's over. They don't care how they you get really there change. as long as you get there, I guess, huh? <laughs> yeah, just taking a nap. Yeah. <laughs> and they never really fixed it. Uh, you could do, there's a similar kind of thing that you do in the expansion mysteries of the Sith. So but I haven't won that game yet. So here we're gonna go down here into this area and pick up this wrench right there. Probably didn't see it, but we need it to turn this. And then that lets us get through the level. And you may have also saw in that strip put uh, another four star uh, Four speed and force jump. So pretty much this is as fast and as high as he's gonna be able to jump throughout the rest of the run. And this is pretty much like when the run also begins. And you saw him killing uh, those like Ugnaughts. Those give him more dark force points to trigger the dark side ending. And here just gonna prop that elevator so we can hit that switch when it's ready. The elevator is already down. I'm trying to save as much time as possible. And then this part's kind of boring. You kind of have to wait for these doors to open and close fully. And if you mess up, you're greeted to a pretty horrible sounding alarm. Like if I try to open this door in front of me before the door behind me uh, isn't closed properly, then uh, sound will play and you can't do anything. The door freezes in place and you lose some time from that. So hopefully not going to do that. Yeah, this is also actually the, the longest level in the game. It's a, it takes usually about three minutes and just waiting for these doors to open and close contribute a lot to that. And then here, obviously, there's just no point in using force speed uh, just yet, because you can't really do anything with it if we get there faster. But that's it for the doors, uh, except for these little ones up here. Same process, but these ones are a lot faster. So don't have to worry about them too much. And this is the part where uh, the movement and the speed can become a little bit deadly. But if you ride on like a slope surface, you won't take fall damage. So that's kind of the only way that we're able to get through those areas harm free. And then get the concussion rifle off of that guy, which will be very important as well. Yeah, concussion rifle is pretty much like an AOE type gun, so it clears out areas. And you can also use it uh, for uh, pretty much like force jumps, kind of like the rail detonator as rocket jumps. You can use that, but you'll take like less damage. Yeah. And coming up in this elevator, there is a concussion rifle skip that you can do. Um, I'll try it just to show it. If I don't get it, it's not a big deal. 
Um, so we're going to count the sides of this to get the right place. And then we just force jump away up at the top here. I'm surprised I got it, to be honest. Nice, yeah, nicely done. Yes. Thank you. Oh, and a little Easter egg here at the back of this, they put... I don't know if it's Sam or Max, but they're based on that. Same developers of those games. If anyone knows of those games. This level, uh, another example, uh, later in the level of how speed can mess with you and potentially hurt. Um, at the very end, there's a wind tunnel that accelerates you even more. And if you just run full tilt into the end of it, you uh, will die pretty fast. And then here, I'm shooting those to disable some force fields. Uh, there we go. Uh, oh, interesting. So enemies firing cancels out force jump? Is that what just happened there? Yeah. Just... Oh, man. Oh, that's brutal. Hmm, am I missing? Uh... Oh, that was the sound. There we go. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I had to shoot a specific spot there and missed it a few times, but that's okay. Yeah. That's another example right there of just enemies getting in your way and really can't be unpredictable. And come up here. There's an interesting little skip. This is the older way of doing it. Just kind of that thing in the middle there will kind of damage you and push you up a little bit. And this is the wind tunnel I was talking about. If you run too fast, you'll take damage like that. <laughs> Just like that. So, I'm gonna not want to do that. <laughs> and we're coming up on another boss fight here. It's probably my least favorite boss fight. Oh, uh, yeah. The goal is to use the strong, the secondary attack of the lightsaber and hit. Because uh, you swing it twice when you use the secondary attack, you want to hit one of them with one and the other with the other. Um, sometimes the little guy will go invisible on you, and sometimes they'll just block everything. It's really up in the air, but... Yeah, and so the, the main goal with this fight is that um, to try... Uh, because the swings are always the same rate, um, trying and hit, hitting both of them with each swing. Yeah, yeah. And so one of them's invisible, so it's oh, hard. Yeah, it's brain oh, actually, nice. Okay. Bad. Yeah, nice. Good job. Thank you. Uh, so you can imagine if one swing hits both of them, then you're basically having the number of, of swings you need to do overall in the fight. So that, that was pretty good. You got um, the little one a few times, so that was great. Thank you. And this level, pretty fast. Oh boy, that's a lot of damage. Pretty fast, pretty simple. Just kind of climbing up to the top of this thing in the middle. Um, again, there is a much faster way of doing it, but it's a lot more precise. Uh, so we'll just do the safe way. Yeah, and it doesn't lose too much time doing it that way. The the other way is to do like some super precise jumps. If you miss it, you lose a whole bunch of time. And you can also choose to pick up more sequencers because we need some sequencers for the boss fight. <laughs> picked them up earlier in another level and took a bit more time doing that, but that's okay. And then here we're gonna get a uh, level three force throw for the boss fight that comes up after this level, which will be fun. And then right now we're just kind of slicing these panels uh, in order to progress through the level. Of rough, obviously. Uh, there's a full shield there, which is fine. Sometimes you get shot with a real dead here. The game becomes a lot of NPCs on your screen at once. Um, yeah. Yeah. So something also to mention, if you're familiar with the the Outcast and Academy runs, maybe from other marathon performances. Uh, you'll notice something in those games is that you have a lot of control of your character while they are in the air. 
but this is actually not the case for Dark Horses 2. So the moment Inostra actually ends up starting one of his jumps, he has very, very little capability of being able to redirect uh, himself. So each one of these tight little platforming jumps you may see him do are actually quite, quite difficult um, and require really good setups. And so he's been nailing a lot of a lot of these throughout the entire run. So it's very impressive to see. Thank you. To the one called Maul. Oh, yeah, comes... this level. Yeah, go yeah this there. level is the the cutoff point for the dark side and light side <clears throat> ending. So since he killed all those civilians and put three force powers into force throw, uh, that triggers the dark side ending. And speaking of force throw, we're going to be using it to finish this boss fight because a lot of unconventional ways of winning boss fights in this game. Love to see it. So first thing we're going to do is hit him once. And then we're going to move towards these crates. And then we're going to force throw the crates at him to kill him, <laughs> just like that. And we're on to the next level. Uh, this level, another one that's pretty short. Uh, it's just this one really, there isn't too much except for the final trick. Uh, just a lot of running around. Easy to get dizzy. Yeah, I think this was one of my favorite levels when I was a kid playing this game because the. The rest of the game is like very like flat with like the ground you're walking on, but this one is like completely tilted at its side. Yeah, uh, but pretty impressive here's the actually. Trick. Yeah, so here is the trick. Yep. So this uh, the ship that we're lowering is the end trigger of the level, but you're not supposed to be able to reach it from this side. But by using force jump, I mean force uh, speed. Sorry, we're just gonna jump into it and trigger the end of the level. Nice. Now we have another boss fight. Uh, once again, this guy can turn invisible because bosses can turn invisible. But we're gonna grab the four star there, which will give us uh, unlimited force ability. Jumping around, which isn't ideal. And we're just gonna hold force lightning on him. And that's that. Nice. Bosses that don't pose much of a threat in this game, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. That lightning strat was like actually something that came up within the last year, right, Piper? Or is, I, I remember there being a different boss strat for that a while ago. Yeah, before you used to just like hit him normally, but uh, Circle's one of the, the world record holder in this game. Was, that yeah. was one of the strats he found when he was uh, learning the game. Yeah, shout outs to Circles and the rest Huge of the community. Shout outs to Circles, yeah. Uh, up here, this little thing here is going to boost us all the way up. It's kind of like a light lift. So that was probably the best I've ever had that in my life, where I didn't actually have to redo it. Nice. But yeah, this level, pretty straightforward, I would say. Nothing too crazy here. Except for one skip that'll be coming up soon. But right now, I'm just riding elevators. Get to the top. But this level will be a really good demonstration of level three, four, uh, level four, four speed and its capability. Because right here, this wind tunnel that I'm maneuvering through, uh, you're not supposed to be able to go through this. You're supposed to get in a different way, but because four speed is so broken in this game, you can just get right through. It also shows the importance of diagonal running. Because if you're running straight yeah. in level four, four speed, you're not able to, you'll get pushed back by the wind, but the yeah. diagonal running just pushes you enough. Yeah, exactly. The power of vectors. Heck yeah. I think I got some cushion right for ammo. Screen game is missing it. So, and then that's the end of this level. And then coming up is probably my least favorite level in this game. Uh, this level is very claustrophobic. A lot of backtracking. Um, it does have one pretty cool trick. But for now, what we're doing is going up here. We're going to go through and get a key and then come back this exact same way and open that door on my right that I just passed, uh, which will lead us to a box of sorts. And that box will be important very soon. So going back, going to pick up this shield here. <coughs> and then... That lever there will call down a box. A crate. Just give me a second. 
Right back to where we were here. There. And now with this box, if you crouch into it, uh, uh, you can actually clip right through it and land there. It was pretty decent. Wow. Nice. Yeah, so once again, landing on a sloped surface um, ends up mitigating a good amount of fall damage, if not all of it. And so yeah. he he just landed on a very, very tiny slope, which I'm guessing you weren't able to see, because that's how small it is. <laughs> I missed the sequence. So Am I going to be good for a jerk? Uh, you should be, since you're, okay. you're just doing force throw and Bach. You okay. should have enough. I thought so. Just making sure. Because, yeah, what I did there was I accidentally I missed some sequencers, which we're going to be using for the final boss. But should be okay. Yeah, something else to mention is that you're going to... You've noticed the Nostra hitting all these switches and stuff. And sort of as a true homage to all Star Wars games, switches are incredibly difficult to press. Uh, <laughs> they, they can be very, very, very finicky. Yeah, they're definitely they can definitely be rough for just some switches. You gotta hit them pretty dead on. Yeah. <laughs> so silly. Yeah. So right here, uh, come up towards the end of the game. This is the last. Uh, oh boy, I think I got uh, hit by the glitch I was mentioning earlier. But yeah, I'm just gonna go through here. Just a lot of running, and then. Hitting a switch here. Uh, I don't really know exactly how this puzzle works. Um, I don't know if you could explain it, Salamiri. Oh, sure. Uh, I mean, you just hit those buttons twice. It's yeah. like, a, like a lift puzzle, and you want to you wanna hit this one as it's closing, and then it'll like lift up a lift and give you access to the end of the level. Which is right here. And then the end of this level will be uh, a walker, which we will be destroying. It's just some real dead shots, hopefully I don't die. And one more for the guy, pick up his key, and that's the end of the level. Now coming up on the last two levels of the game. First one is Bach, and as his name suggests, he is quite the nuisance. Um, but we're going to be dealing with him in a pretty similar way that we did Ma. So trying to lead him over here and lead him into this room on my right. If he cooperate, oh, cooperated. And then all these rocks in here, we're going to force throw him, <laughs> kill him with them. Pretty anticlimactic uh, bo uh, boss fights in this game for sure. And then coming up here, hopefully we get some good luck. Final boss of the game, final level of the game. Um, Time's going to be coming up. Yep, hopefully, if we don't get uh, messed with here. But I think we should be good. So I'm going to stand over here and just wait a little bit. The longer I wait over here, the more time I have up top here. And then up top here, we're going to be placing some sequencers. And Jarek, final boss, is going to come up through the little middle thing here. And if I do it right... Oh, there we go. Nice. It will blow up, and it's not actually the explosion that will kill him. That is time, by the way. No, it's not. It, time's on credit roll, but... Um, yep, and right. time. Um, but it's actually the speed at which he hits the ceiling that kills him. <laughs> Pretty interesting fact about that. that. It's just another example of broken speed in this game. That's like the icing on the cake for this run. Very well done, in Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you, thank you. Gosh, you know, I have to ask, uh, this run, I think in comparison to a lot of the runs we've had on the show, is just a lot faster, like, I don't know, movement-wise. Yeah. Like, do you find that challenging, trying to maneuver th uh, yourself through the game when it's this fast? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of running into walls, uh, especially yeah. early on, but you kind of get used to it. I think it actually makes it a really fun and, like, interesting speed run that way. 
Yeah, um, it's like because it is so fast. You have to really be on it. I think uh, if I had blinked, I would have missed it because there are a lot of really cool jumps and stuff in the run. Really yeah. well done. Um, Thank that, you. That was so fun. Um, Thank you. And uh, Co also, yeah. uh, do you, do you mind if I cut in really yeah, quick? Yeah, please do. Uh, what's your RTA PB in Astra? Uh, thirty-two something or other. Uh, not anymore. You just got a thirty-one fifty-three. So, oh, yeah. awesome. very nice. We love <laughs> to that. see that. On stream. Yes. Didn't have to use any of the backup saves. That's so cool. I love seeing awesome. that. Thanks for staying on top of that, Muffin. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, um, do you mind if I give a quick shout out? Yeah, please, really quick? please. I was going to ask if y'all had any final thoughts or shout outs. Yeah, uh, first of all, a great run in Astra. That was thank you. awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Um, really quick shout out to the Star Wars uh, Jedi Knight community, especially. Uh, this includes all the Dark Forces games, as well as Outcast and Academy. Uh, everybody is super welcoming, and we have a ton of resources for everybody. If you go to speedrun.com slash jkdf2, there is our official speedrun leaderboard, and we have guides, we have resources, uh, and a link to our discords. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in trying this out yourself, uh, please definitely go to speedrun.com slash jkdf2. Cool, thank you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's how I got involved. That's how this run was possible. So yeah. Well, very nice. And uh, if you did enjoy the run, everyone, please make sure you follow our runner today. That's twitch.tv slash Inastra, as well as covert underscore muffin on commentary and Piper, which is uh, Issa Lamiri, I believe, here on Twitch, uh, if you can confirm that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, Perfect. That's how, like, Twitch is. Well, I appreciate you all being here. Uh, before we break, everyone, another quick reminder, AGDQ 2021 online is less than two weeks away. January 3rd through the 10th, and we will be having the week-long marathon benefiting the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Prize submissions are open until December 26th. You can go to gamesdonequick.com to find out more. And a big thank you to our Twitch subscribers. Uh, this show and other Hotfix content is uh, sponsored by those subscriptions, and it is very much appreciated. So thank you. Um, the last run of the night is coming up next, Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back, and we will return in a moment with that run. Welcome back to Time Capsule here on the Games Done Quick Twitch channel, the show where we travel back in time to your favorite years in gaming and speedrun our way through popular or influential games released in a particular year. I'm your host, Smooth Operative, and this year we are into 1997. We are on our final run of the evening. I have Rico underscore KSB here with me, ready to speedrun Crash Bandicoot 2 100%, as well as Dillwingo and White Paws on commentary. Welcome. How are you all feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Perfect. Hello. Rico. Hello. Hey. Welcome. So, Rico, what's the what's the plan that we got going on right now? All right, so we're going to do a speedrun of Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back 100%. Uh, this is a very fast-paced category, so I probably couldn't cover all of it even if I wanted to, which is <laughs> why Dylan and White Paws are here going to help me uh, take care of all of it. Got the backup, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Well, we also may occasionally hear commentary from my cat. It depends on her mood. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, too. Uh, but whenever you are ready, we got you on the timer, so you can give us the countdown, Rico. All right, I'll go back to the menu now and get ready. For sure. All right, I'll count down from three. Three, two, one, go. Best of luck. Thank you. Right, uh, there's, there's a lot going on in the first few levels, so if you guys want to cover a lot of the basics while I focus, that would probably be best. Yeah, that's uh, sure. deal. I'll start off. So basically, 100% entails collecting all crystals, gems, and unlocking all secret entrances to the levels. Um, Rico's going to be doing a main movement tech called neutral slide spinning, where he's going to be spinning, or sliding, sorry, not spinning, sliding. But when he slides, he releases the direction on the D-pad, and when he spins, it's a neutral spin, and it gives you further distances. Um, it's really fast. It is very very hard also to chain the neutral slide spins very consistently but you know playing this game for a long time you get pretty good at it uh right off the bat we're going to be seeing a skip to get the red gem early uh, in snowgo it's very basic uh the body slam has a very high uh, height to it especially on the pal version we're, we're playing on the european pal version because the game is intentionally faster uh crash jumps higher he slides longer and the game is just essentially sped up uh, because Naughty Dog wanted to compensate for an NTSC uh, PAL conversion because back in the day that was the big thing with PAL games being slower. So 
Yeah, um, the yeah. top version runs at 25 FPS as opposed to NTSC, which runs at 30. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Rico's gonna be collecting again. He's gonna be doing every level only one time, except for Air Crash. Uh, Air Crash is the only level he has to revisit because it has a secret entrance, and there's a box gem that you need to, with the secret entrance in mind. So um, yeah, uh, the game is very fast paced, so we'll be trying to cover as much as we can. But yeah, so he just got the red gem, the crystal, and now he just got the box gem, and he's out of his way to snow go. Yeah, yeah, like so. Um, yeah, this is the way that everything is laid out in the game. It's just very convenient that, like Bill said, there's only one level that has to be revisited, and it really helps because it it makes the 100% really uh, fast paced and interesting. Um, something of note in this. Uh, level turtle woods is that um every level has a box gem so you have to break every crate in order to get the box gem but you'll probably notice that i am currently breaking none of them uh this level has one of the five color gems and it's the blue gem and you get this gem by breaking zero crates so if i actually hit any of these that's very bad so i might take a little safer than i normally would yeah i think casually it was like this one hint where it said at the end Xbox is out of zero or something like that. Yeah, yeah, if you get the box gem and then revisit the level and reach the end, it'll say X out of zero. So that's how you kind of know. It's still kind of cryptic, but there's yeah. that. It's one of the more cryptic ones, but I actually found that one completely on accident when I was younger. Same. <laughs> I, <think. laughs> I, I don't think I did, actually. Yeah, so once Rico gets the blue gem, he's gonna death abuse and he's gonna just gonna do the, the whole level normally because he'll be able to get the crystal and the box gem. Also, you'll see Rico, um, he'll wiggle in the air occasionally. That's a movement called zigzag where you alternate opposite directions on the D-pad. It actually makes Crash go slightly uh, faster and uh, longer distances in direction. Uh, you can, he's also gonna be doing some curl sliding too, which is basically zigzag. Um, and yeah, zigzag is a big fundamental technique in all three Crash games, uh, as well as Twok as well, which is the uh, PS2, the, the PS2 Crash game. But yeah, it's uh, it's really interesting how zigzagging is in all three of the Naughty Dog games. And um, they're pretty similar with Crash 2 and 3, but Crash 1 is completely different, but it's still the same fundamental techniques. Um, you'll also be seeing Rico doing a combination of other movement tech like glitch low jumping and glitch high jumping. Uh, those are pretty basically, I'm pretty sure they were intended in the game. Um, and um, you're gonna be do you're gonna be seeing a lot of box breaking movements with NSSing, glitch lows, glitch highs, sliding, uh, slides, regular slide spins. It's just it's this game is very uh, nice with the movement. And it's kind of like a freestyle with a lot of the strats we do. And th there's yeah. a lot to unpack with this game's movement, which is like, it's part of what makes it it's so cool, neat. is that there's so yeah. much depth to it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so this is a great level to showcase um, glitch highs, actually, because without glitch highs, you wouldn't be able to jump, like, all across that these gaps and speeds. Yeah. It also uh, kind of shows off zigzag because you can actually yeah, make it, it with a, well. you can make it with a zigzag slide jump, but like the glitch high makes it a bit more lenient. So I just throw it yeah. in there. Um, yeah, the biggest yeah, thing yeah. I want to talk about with the uh, the death abuse I did when I grabbed the blue gem is that this game is very nice in that if you grab a crystal or a gem and then you die, you actually keep it. So because of that, it's faster to you know grab the blue gem, go back out to the level of death abuse, and then respawn at the very beginning than it would be to you know exit Turtle Woods and then go back into it immediately. Yeah, it's like that in this game as well as Crash Three and um, Wrath of Cortex. So it's, it's pretty nice. I think it's that way in most Crash games. The notable exception being the GBA games. Yeah. Yeah. So there's. Rico's gonna go into Crash Test next, and this is one of three chase levels in the game, which are a little different from our normal style of levels. Um, he's gonna be ch being chased by two boulders, this level in Crash Crush, and then a big bear in Warp 3. Uh, these levels are pretty hard. They're probably one of the hardest levels to learn as a beginner, uh, because you're maneuvering from, you know, from backwards. So, uh, but once you get them down, it's pretty simple. He's also gonna be doing hole skips. Uh, he's gonna be skipping over a lot of death, death pits with, uh, with uh, curl sliding and NSS, and he's gonna be maneuvering around pretty quickly, and he's also able to outrun the boulder. Um, coming up also, um, so Nitro is in this game, um, yeah. in, the, in the backwards levels. Um, 
you can't, they, they won't destroy on screen, so Rico has to wait for the boulder to hit them so they can count towards the box count. Once like that, then he's good to go and he can continue. Yeah, yeah basically. Go ahead, what part? No, go ahead, what no, so I was just gonna say that basically if you go too far away from something on the screen, it will just deload. So if you go too far away from the nitrous, you just, yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, and the, the way they're supposed to be detonated in this level is the boulder running over them, so there's no nitro detonator like there is in any other uh, level. So exactly. the, the only option there is to wait on them. And be, because of how this game works things is, uh, if it's too far off screen, it deloads, and that's why it doesn't break. Yeah. yeah. Regarding the level order, um, it's mostly dictated by masks. So Aku Aku is the mask that follows me. If you break a crate with his face on it, uh, he shows up and he protects you for one hit point. If you have two of them, he turns gold and he protects you for two hit points. If you break a third mask crate, then he attaches to your face and you become invincible for about 20 seconds. And that sounds really cool, except for it makes your slide very, very slow. So in the speed run, it's actually very undesirable to get it outside of one scenario that we'll cover when we get to it later in the run. Legit, if you have third mask form, the fastest way of movement is like crouching. Crawling. Like, it's crawling. crawling, yeah, it's crawling. It's for some for some reason, the, the crawl gets sped up, but then everything else gets slowed down. Yeah. We're going to be actually using the third mask form in one level in Warp 4 and hanging out. Uh, that's the only instance in Crash 2 where we're going to be using it in Crash 3. It's actually, funnily enough, the complete opposite where you want third mask form because it actually speeds up Crash's uh, movement in Crash 3. But in this game, we want to, as Rico said, stay away from it. So a lot of our warp, our warp, um, our warp routing is to avoid the mask, the third mask form. But in Warp 4, we will be intentionally getting uh, third mass form in uh, the second level hanging out. So yeah, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to it. Yeah, so, yeah that's too far ahead. Hey, yeah. We'll talk about the timer here. Yeah. Um. So there's there was a timer at the beginning of this level, um, and how that works is that if you reach the end of the level before the timer runs out, then you get a special gem at the end, which I picked up and then immediately death abuse for. Uh, there's two levels that have this type of gem, and the second one will be later in the run. Um, so the way the opening of the level works is that you you break everything up to a certain checkpoint, and then from there you just speed to the end of the level, grab the timer gem, and then death abuse. And that's the the fastest way to get as much as you can before you have to death abuse. And then uh, this is the blue gem path. It's unlocked by having the blue gem, which is why we did Turtle Woods before this level. Um, and this is required for full completion because it has. Uh, it has crates in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gem paths and death routes are basically essential for most of 100% because they'll contain either boxes, uh, another uh, clear gem, or both. So uh, we will be getting on all of the gem routes and some of the death routes, but some of the death routes will actually be skipping slash uh, skipping the platform, but we'll go over that later when we get there. Yeah. I actually yeah. think Hang 8 is overall probably the easiest level in this warp room, but it's also like one of the worst ones to mess up. Because if I had died at any point before that checkpoint I just broke, then would have gone all the way back into the blue gem path. Yeah, yeah it's definitely still a costly. It's also the longest level in warp one, so yeah. it drags pretty far. Oh, oh, I thought I could squeeze to that mine. Thankfully I one isn't too bad. Yeah, that that's a pretty safe one. Yeah, compared to like any other one. That, I mean, that, was, that was not a bad death at all. <laughs> yeah, but because of how like just how deep this game is in terms of its movement and what you can do, it like, this game is actually pretty brutal to run. Like you, you know, you think Crash Bandicoot, oh, nice little casual romp, but like when you, when you go through it at lightning speed, it's very very easy to lose a lot of time. Uh, for like frame of reference. My PB in this is a 116.55, which is considered to be like pretty respectable, but the world record is a 109.43. Mm -hmm. um, so it just shows like how how far down this game can go. Yeah, mistakes in 100% especially are just very costly. Um, you can go from losing anywhere from 10 seconds to like a full minute in a matter of two levels. It's, it's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, so warp one is almost done. The piss is the last level, and once Rico gets the last crystal, he's gonna be fighting. So there's once you get all five crystals in each warp room, there's a boss afterwards. So there's 
four bosses total and excluding the final boss and ripper Roo, it will be the next boss it's considered the hardest boss in the game I, I, hardest I, boss in I, the history I, of in the game. history of video games yeah you'll you'll see what i mean it, it's it's pretty hard but yeah so rico uh this level actually has a split path so there's boxes on the on the right path as well but rico's gonna be backtracking uh yeah, once he gets to a certain point yeah the left path has the crystal so you have to basically go through most of it the right path has but two crates at the beginning, a lot of nothing, and then a checkpoint at the end. So mm -hmm. it's faster to just get those two at the beginning, turn around, do the entire left path, and then just backtrack to the part of the right path that you need to do. The right, the left path also has an exclamation crate that triggered two of those uh, four crates in that little room there. So this is really just the best way to go about this. And yeah. a lot of the like the backtracking stuff, I know like. Crash 2 is pretty highly regarded, but it, one thing that people do commonly criticize it for is like there there is more backtracking in it than there is in basically any other Crash game. I don't really have a problem with it though, because in the context of a speed run, it's actually pretty cool because it's a lot of memorization and just knowing what you're able to do. Um, but even casually, I don't really think it's as bad as a lot of people make it out to be. Or is it a TNT spin? Yeah, you can spin TNTs and not take damage, it's pretty cool. Yeah, TNTs have expanding hitboxes, so you can spin them and detonate them and then get out of the range of them in time to uh, uh, just not get hit by them. Yeah, not get hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the the crux of that is uh, being able to spin bounce off of uh, crates. Is if you're, As you're landing on a crate, if you perfectly time a spin, you can jump off of it as it's breaking. Uh, the crate physics of the original trilogy are really just like one of the coolest aspects of them you know, in a speedrun. So actually, there's something that I that I just occurred to me with the TNTs, and probably would be good to explain, is that like sometimes it's better to spin jump TNTs than just jumping on them, because the TNTs sometimes explode, but like they don't break the boxes around them sometimes. It, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's similar to how the... Uh, how the boulder and crash dash wouldn't uh, wouldn't break the nitros if it wasn't there. Also, we were lying. This boss is really easy, so we're going to use this to continue spreading <laughs> TNTs. Um, uh, <laughs> so yeah, this is an scroller, so there's literally yeah. nothing here. <laughs> yeah. So the way TNTs are programmed is that if, if they go, if they get deloaded, or we say if they get off screen. Um, then they're they're programmed to delete themselves and a set number of crates around them. Like they're programmed like, okay, we'll delete this crate and this crate and this crate and this crate and be broken. And some crates that would be blown up by the TNT if you were watching it explode are not programmed to be deleted by the TNT if it gets deloaded. So in those instances it is better to spin out the TNT instead of just standing there waiting for it to blow up. And then I guess another thing we should mention while we're in this fight is uh, this is a PS1 game, but we're I'm running it on a PlayStation 2. Uh, PS2s have an option called fast disk speed, which cuts all the load times down by I want to say about half. And overall it's saves like yeah. saves like about a minute and a half or something, two minutes it's over. Boring Honda. Yeah, bad. it saves like a minute and a half and compared to playing on normal disk speed on PS2, so it's a lot of time. Yeah, it it could potentially be more. It's like, like a yeah, it's, like it's, a it's it's pretty it's pretty strong. Yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's a big difference. So yeah. that was the end of warp one, but the next level is Barrett, and this level is so annoying that I basically consider it the fifth <laughs> level in warp one. True. Yeah. We, we the the level... run doesn't begin until you leave this level. Yeah, we call this level warp one extended. So you're not really out of warp one until you're out of Barrett because Barrett has a lot of just stupid nonsense with the boxes. But yeah, we're gonna be doing charges with the bear it actually doesn't save as much time as you think it does but uh this is the fastest movement with the bear um and rico got the first set of boxes yeah. pretty easily on the light <laughs> that's that's supposedly the easier one but it's the one i mess up more it's also yeah, the worst actually, one to mess up because that that one take that one loses like 35 seconds if you fail it the yeah there's still... literally like 15. but yeah so polar if you hit circle or r1 you get this charge which 
unlike uh, the tiger in Crash 3, you can't do it indefinitely. So you press the button and then Crash just charges for a certain amount of time. And then there's like a one to two second cooldown. But if you jump immediately when you start the charge, you carry a good bit of the, the momentum from the charge. And then when you land, you're able to just charge immediately again, which is why I'm doing this weird like little polar launch. All right, this is the, the other tough one that naturally I messed up. <laughs> um, yeah, those are pretty, pretty tragic. I don't know why they're spaced out so... I don't know. Like it's that. it's easier to get those on NTSC because you have five more extra frames. Um, yeah, it's a little easier. And you're moving a little bit slower on NTSC too, but uh, those boxes are... We call those bear boxes. And oh, he's got a little bit dry. Yeah. <laughs> it only loses like 20 seconds. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, it, it's just like really tragic to like, if you have like a really solid warp one and then you just come into this level and immediately lose like what, 20 to 30 seconds. Yeah. It's crazy how that's like intended, like the developers intended you to break those boxes like that. And it's yeah. it's legitimately very hard. <laughs> yeah, like e even though it's easier on NTSC, I still think it's kind of rough. Yeah. Um, I, I think it was, I think in the, the alpha version of the game, like your your lateral movement with polar is a lot faster. So it's probably a, a leftover from that where they, they made it so you have like less speed going left and right with polar and then they didn't compensate those crates. And then it's just even harder on PAL because of the faster movement. So this is the second chase level. And another thing I actually forgot to mention in the first one was Rico's going to be doing um, wall, uh, wall boosting. Yeah, yeah. You'll see him NSS. I wrote it down. Yeah, you'll see him NSS. Um, against the wall and that actually gives Crash extra speed and like for example we did a whole skip earlier wall boost so yeah it only do... works in these two levels and the three river levels I believe it doesn't work in unbearable no at least no. To, to my knowledge it doesn't right, so again you're gonna see I'm gonna wait on these nitros here because if I don't then the boulder will not break them and then there's another set coming up here You'll notice that I'm, I'm like keeping track of uh, my crate count when I get to these points. So I, I know like uh, yeah, 23 and then 31. 31. And then after that, we don't have to wait on any other nitros for the rest of the run. So it's nice that it's only like at the beginning. Yeah. This, these levels, like I said, these are some of the hardest levels to learn when you're first starting out with Hondo. Yeah, it, it's a lot of memorization, but once you get them down, I think they are some of the coolest levels in the run. Yeah, he's able to literally just clip through that right side of the fence pretty pretty easily. Also, if you press down, there, there's this glitch that is very, very common in this level, where it, sometimes the walls just de -load. It's yeah. preventable. It's preventable. Yeah. In order to prevent down, that is to press down after yeah. while, while exiting the bonus. While exiting the bonus. Yeah. yeah. There's some weird. There's some weird glitches that can happen in this game. Um, hopefully, we won't get like, for example, hanging out, soft walk, or embeds or oh my god. Yeah, embeds are kind of <laughs> in your control though. But, Mostly. Yeah. So the eel deal is up next. It is uh, the second level, well, third level where we get a color gem. We're going to be in the green gem. Um, the green gem is actually in like a hidden area where it's behind an invisible wall that the developers hit on purpose. You'll see what I mean. It's in a split path. And then once we get that, we'll death abuse like we did with Turtle Woods and then do the rest of the level like normally. So um, I think the sewer levels are some of the cooler cooler uh, levels with movement because you're in a confined area and yeah it, it really range. puts your curl slide in there, so I, I took damage there on purpose because i need to lose both of the mass but you saw i ran through that wow. wall that's like not supposed to be there that wall or, definitely looks suspicious looked suspicious rather yeah yeah the, the hint is that like there's this there's this right path and there's all these nitro and a singular crate in a dead end and why would there be anything why, why would there be this huge room if there was nothing behind that wall of nitros Mm -hmm. Is basically the hint. Yeah. These, these sneaky developers. <laughs> I, I do like the way they went about the secrets in Crash 2, where oh, they they can they seem very cryptic, but if you are paying close enough attention, they they give pretty solid hints that are able to be deduced aside from like one or two that I think are a bit out there. Mm -hmm. um, and then like other Crash games. Well, they have secrets. I don't think they're as cleverly hidden. Like, the two secrets in Crash 3 are cryptic. Oh, yeah, they're yeah. super cryptic. 
uh, 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 Crash 4, the one that just got released uh, a few months ago, I think their secrets are, for the color gems, are decently well done, but they do lean a bit more on the cryptic side than these ones, but that might also just because I have experience with this game of you know, two decades. Yeah, so this is the first instance we'll see coming up of hangrails we're going to be using. There's hangrails a few times, mainly in the sewer levels, but uh, we'll be seeing these later. This is not the only time we'll see them for now. Um, yeah. Pay attention to the the movement speed on the hangrails. That'll matter in about in 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, coming up, uh, we still have two more levels of Warp 2. Coming up is Snowbiz, which is probably one of the coolest levels. It is probably the best level in Warp 2. It's a curve? Uh... Um, the nitro right. one. Oh, yeah, I think it did. Okay, so... Wow, I haven't done that in, like, three years. <laughs> okay, so the, the ELO deal is so cool that we just, we just we gotta do it again. Yeah, don't it's even worry about it. We gotta see it again. So, like, I've been I've been de-rusting this for the past week or so, and I, I've had instances where I've had to reset whole levels just from, like, getting soft locked into them, and I've still managed to be well underestimated, so... As long as that doesn't happen, like, every level, I think we'll be good. <laughs> God damn it, I feel like I could have totally caught that, but I... Yeah, no, I, I think I, like I really did just forget to Yeah. Oh, was yeah. it that great? Yeah, it was that uh... great. I think if I had been thinking, I could have finished the level just to not have to do the green gem again, but... So, in the remake, that crate, you don't actually have to go that way to break it. Because yeah. the nitro the tornado blows it up. Yeah. I'll, I'll use that my, as my excuse. Uh, <laughs> in the Insane Trilogy, the nitros detonate all the crates around them. <laughs> Despite the fact that I haven't run the Insane Trilogy in like months. Oh my that's, that's my excuse. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, because in the original Crash games, the nitro, the nitros, uh, they won't detonate. Like they won't destroy other boxes uh, within the blast radius. You have for some reason you have to still individually get them. Uh, yeah, they I, fix th the I think the reason for that is again because because this game deloads anything that's too far away. Uh, mm -hmm. They just didn't program the nitros to destroy the crates around them. The remake yeah. the remake loads the levels in their entirety, so they actually just legitimately blow them up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I guess a minor thing we should mention is uh, another thing that's. A, makes the PAL version advantageous is the body slam. On the NTSC version, the, the blast radius of the body slam is three crates if you're lucky. Uh, <laughs> in the oh, PAL right. version, the the, bla the radius of the body slam is four crates. So I had to do one less body slam there in order to break all those. Yeah, the body slam was actually, it was patched in PAL and then the NTSCJ version actually also has the fixed body slam. So it's you know, the bad body slam is only on the American version. Yeah, the downside of NTSCJ is that it has the NTSC movement speed, and then it also <laughs> requires you to get the 10 lives from Polar. It yeah, also has some weird hands. Yeah, it has mass cutscenes, which are super slow, and you can't All really right, skip I'm, them with off audio. I'm really glad I only had to do the ELDL once, right? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing ever happened. It was first try, as always. Yeah. As Dill was saying, then the next level is Snowbiz, and I, I would actually say this is one of my favorite levels in the run, if not my favorite. There, there's just so much cool things going on, especially in the uh, the gem path that will be in here. Yeah, the red gem path in Snowbiz is probably one of the coolest movement sections in the whole run, to be honest. It's very fast-paced, very quick. You're doing a lot of box breaking techniques, a lot of hole skips, glitch highs, glitch lows. It's it, it pretty much showcases a lot of the main movement in Crash and Crash Two. Um, and yeah, it has all the box. It has a bunch of boxes we need for the box gem, obviously as well. So yeah, th um, this gem path is just in the running for one of the best parts of any Crash game. Yeah, very very cool. Um, no, by the way, if anybody's wondering, we don't have to get all the Whopper fruit. <laughs> you have to get 80% of them in Crash 4. Yeah, that is true. In Crash 4, the gems, for some reason, a lot of the gems, well, then, like, the majority of the gems actually need them. It's, every level in Crash 4 has three Wumpa fruit gem, where you have to get 40, 60, and 80% of the fruit in the level to get them. The reason they did that is because the the modern mode of Crash 4, which is the version that the devs intended you to play on, doesn't have a life system. So it's a way to give the Wumpa fruit purpose. 
Yeah, that's pretty cool though. I try I tried to do some 3D ranging to break those crates faster, but failed both times. Yeah, uh, there's another technique that we'll be seeing in 2D sections called 3D range, where Rico will go out of the 2D range section and into a 3D range, and he'll be doing it to intentionally later on skip cycles, get ahead of cycles, and do a bunch of cool things. Yeah, that's the cool part about uh, the 2D parts of this game is that even though it's a 2D section, it's still a 3D game. So barring any like invisible walls that are sometimes there, you're able to just, you know, like 2.5D go uh, weave around obstacles. Mm -hmm. See a lot more of later on in the run. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, after this, we'll be doing uh, Air Crash, which is the last level in Warp 2, but we will, of course, like I said earlier, we'll be revisiting it because the, we cannot get the box gem until you get unlock the secret entrance for air crash and we'll, you'll actually see what a secret entrance is um after this level because we will be actually unlocking one of them through air crash uh a little difficult to explain right away but um you'll see what i mean when when the time comes yeah air crash is just a level that's so densely packed with secrets that no matter what we could possibly think of there's there's no way to do it on the first visit yeah yeah, you have to find like a wrong warp or something almost. Yeah, th there's yeah. actually a a, a non. Oh, I got hit, I got hit by the hitbox and then got a body slam. Um, yeah, that happens because the slide and body slam are on the same button. So if you're you, if you get knocked in the air when you think you're gonna slide, you just get a forced body slam. That one wasn't too bad, thankfully. But yeah, like th there's a non-official new game plus 100% category where you use a glitch to start a 0% file in. Uh, any warp room you want, so warp room five. And in that run, you can do all of Air Crash in a single visit, but you still have to visit it again to get the secret exit. So no matter what you do, you enter this level twice. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna... Yeah, so no box jump on the first pass, so we're gonna leave some behind. Um, no, that, that platform's pretty cool. I don't know what that is. It's probably nothing important. Just keep going and find a crystal. Yeah. Um, he's not gonna also, Rico's not gonna intentionally trigger the second checkpoint because if, I you. I just like to live life on the edge. Yeah. yeah it, it looked at me funny. And it was funny. Also, yeah. I mean, I, I, so I, I had to redo EOD. That's not a big deal. It's not gonna happen again, right? What? You only did it once, it's all. Oh, yeah, there was oh, yeah you're right. Yeah. So, so well, that's how it works in this game and. Well, other games is that you have to reach that level without, or that part of the level without dying. It's pretty stressful, I guess. Wow, it dropped my jump. All right, oh, so th there's a backup yeah. route we can do, so we'll just we'll just do that part of the level later. Uh, yeah. yeah. We'll, so uh, this thing looks pretty cool. It's a, oh, cool. Oh, wow. Wow, very suspicious. Yep. So that's the first of five secret exits, and the hint is why would the, that platform just be there by itself? Um, so that unlocks Snogo, and this is how you're supposed to get the red gem, but we already got the red gem, so we're just going to enter it and immediately leave. So you might be wondering, well, if you already got the red gem, why even bother opening the door? Uh, every secret exit, like Dil said at the beginning of the run, gives you 1%. So if I were to go through the entire game, get every gem, but not unlock that doorway, I would get the secret ending, but I would only get 99%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So ideally, you do the entirety of the death route. Um, but I messed it up. <laughs> so thankfully as a backup uh, on the second visit air crash, I can just go back and do all the death route. And because I touched the death route platform, even if I die in the level for the remainder of the save file, it just stays open. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, yeah, so this game lags a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why it dropped the drone. Sometimes it just can happen and it's, it's like sometimes outside of your control. Yeah, yeah. Cra crash games are the, the original crash games in particular are pretty notorious where sometimes you just your inputs just get eaten. Yeah, dropped inputs can happen either because of lag spots, which those are avoidable, and then it can just randomly happen, which are not avoidable. And, but that's also a subject of the disagreement in the community. Some people think that all dropped inputs are preventable, where I we're all like nah it's some of them are preventable but some of them literally just happen so uh yeah. the game be like that <laughs> in the meantime we just beat the second boss <laughs> yeah. yeah so this yeah. fight this fight just has like you can manipulate the movement of the spinning i don't even remember who we 
is is it Joe or is he? Uh, Joe is the skinnier one, and Mo is the uh, the bigger one in the center. Okay, so yeah, but you yeah, can manipulate the movement. But yeah, yeah so, so the the positions I was standing in were very deliberate, just to make that fight go by as quickly as possible. Um, so this is plant food. This is the other level with the timer gem, and this timer gem is actually the yellow gem. Um, and the way we we get it is very neat. So hopefully it goes well. Yeah, it's super sick. Yeah, I'll yeah. probably actually want to focus on this one. So. Alright. This is a very bad uh, mess up. Here, uh, you can see some instances of what we're seeing right there. Um, with the, with the jet board. Is this is Is that what it is? I think so. Yeah, yeah. definitely. But yeah, you just hug the wall and crush goes slightly faster. Yeah, basically Rico is gonna try to beat the whole level up to the last checkpoint with getting every box. And then once he gets to the last checkpoint, go to the end of the level, get the yellow gem, and then death abuse, and then do the, re the last part of the level, get the box gem, and then the so, yeah, yeah. You, you might be wondering why I entered the bonus round. I was like, doesn't that make the timer jump uh, disappear? No, it doesn't, actually. Uh, the timer's still going, even though it's no longer on screen. And there is just enough time to enter the bonus, break everything, get this last checkpoint, run to the end of the level, uh, grab the timer gem. Uh, it, it is a little tight, though, so like it is very oh, yeah, yeah. Go wrong as well. Funny thing to note also is the the if for beginners this is usually yeah not, not too hard but you can actually get the use of the bonus from the whole time roll completely the reset which will have way more leeway time so yeah I, I use that as a backup if uh, either like if the bonus goes very wrong uh, and I lose a lot of time in it or if I enter the bonus and have like no mask. Um, then I'll just I'll just death abuse on the bonus to be safe, and that's still faster than skipping the bonus, running to the end of the level, and then respawning before the bonus. Um, but thankfully, I got everything there properly. Um, that's a very clean level, actually. A good level. Hell yeah! This, this is one of those levels that you just like learn to be consistent at, just by the nature of how to do it fast is just so unforgiving that over time you just know what to do. Yeah, so next, I think Rico's Warp 3 is a little bit different than, like, mine. Yeah, the, the optimal round ruin. does uh, Road to Ruin next because there's I'll a cyclone. I do the same route I do. <laughs> there's a cycle in Road to Ruin you can catch at the beginning that's set up through plant food, but I'm not practiced in it, so I I take advantage of faster warp movement and just do unbearable first. Yeah, so this, yeah. is, this is the final chase level, and we're being chased by John Becker. Also, yeah, to note, in this level, there's actually a nitro switch, so he doesn't have to wait on any nitros um, in this level, luckily enough. So, nitro detonator should say the nitro switch. Mm, same thing. Yeah, so this level also has another secret area, um, but it's a secret, so I we won't tell you uh, where it is <laughs> until, until it comes up. Uh, um, oh, this yeah, is a pretty cool. Yeah, he's gonna death abuse. I cannot let it Rico just died. And then he's gonna, oh wait, no, never mind. This is the secret. Uh, yeah. So the hint for this is that when the bear chases you, it it falls down the bridge. It leaves three of the planks behind. So it kind of entices you to like, oh, what is what is beyond this? Um, but if you death abuse, then you don't have to wait for the bear. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Fun, As you can notice, the bear will go super slowly. So. It's just better to death abuse, and just, the blanks are broken, so... Fun fact, in the Insane Trilogy, if you try to death abuse there, <laughs> the bear despawns and the bridge just never breaks, so you do have to wait on him in the remake. Amazing. But the, the strat in the remake there is, uh, you just go all the way to the Nitro Detonator, pass the bonus, and then backtrack back, and, and by that time the bear is done. That area is always super cool to me, like that secret area. Yeah, it's it's one of those areas where when you get the movement down, it's just one of the coolest parts of the run. That area, I remember it being super hard casually. Oh yeah, no, that just doing it when, when you first play the game is definitely very rough. And I would say even in a run, it's one of the more challenging parts of the level. For sure. Yeah, Rigo's actually in the la after the last checkpoint. He's gonna be riding on our good friend Polar um, to the end of the level. Um, it's gonna speed things up a little bit, and then afterwards he's gonna grab the box gem, and then he has to go back to Polar because like he forgot to give Polar his lunch. So uh, yeah, yeah. Polar's uh, switched to a scheduled mail plan, just like my cat, and uh, you know, Cra Crash just kind of had it and we forgot to give it to him. Yeah, so he's gonna get the gem and then he's gonna go back and feed him his lunch. So just, just letting you guys know, it's not, this isn't part of the speed run. Uh, this is just for GDQ. It's, it's just humane. 
Yeah, we're just we're save just, the animals, babe. Save the animals. Uh, wait, uh, what? Okay, Thor okay. didn't want it, so he banished me to the shadow. Oh my god! Yeah. All right, I dude. cannot believe Crash just got banished to the shadow realm. That, yeah. that really so, sucks. So that's the second secret exit. Uh, this one actually unlocks a completely different level. This is totally bare. It's one of the two levels that doesn't have a crystal, but it does have a gem, so we we still have to. Work. Yeah. Uh, it's shadow realm polar. We call uh, unbearable this level and bear down the bear gauntlet in warp three because warp three has just three bear levels and they're all notoriously hard and they all. And I missed a crate. What? That's uh, not fair. That, that looked like you broke. That was uh, foreshadowing. Uh, if anybody's played uh, Crash Four, the level bears repeating. That happens a lot. Also happens in Orient Express and Crash Three. The yeah, in Orient Express, it happens a lot too. Yeah. yeah. So I actually think this is the coolest of the three polar levels. There we go, that doesn't work. This this is a level where you just, you learn the crate count just because of stuff like that. Yeah. And even like when I was younger, you know, four or five years old playing this game, I, I memorized the crate count at every point of this level. Uh, yeah. This level's also pretty difficult because you can't really see much up ahead until Yeah. It, like, Darker four. levels like this are kinda like the chase levels where it's a lot of memorization. Um, which again to me adds to the, like the interesting factor of them. Mm -hmm. Also I wanna say when I said Crash was banished to the Shadow Realm, that was completely coincidence. I didn't even consider the fact that the next level was a nighttime level. It just <laughs> occurred to me really. <laughs> yeah. The next level, Road to Ruin, it's probably one of, it's probably the, the coolest level in Warp 3, I'd say. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of different skips. We're going to be skipping both a death route and a secret entrance. Uh, and you'll see why. It's it's yeah. very, very... There, there's basically, like, there's three big jumps in the next level. And it's definitely one of the sickest levels in the run. But I would also say it's about the point where the difficulty of the run ramps up a lot. Like it's, it's, it's a pretty noticeable spike from you know everything before it to everything after it. Yeah, the deaths in this level are pretty costly as well. Um, oh, I actually yeah. did that, and I heard, heard the audio cue of the first flame. Yeah, there's cycles. Like, if you do this level after plant food, you can actually skip the flame cycles, but taking it safe is always not a bad idea. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's one of the things that's it's been on my list to practice, but I just haven't. Yeah. So, just, uh, so yeah, those, those 32 boxes equate to the rest of the box count, and that actually skips uh, uh, the Road to Ruin secret entrance. And then he's going to be doing, Rico's going to be doing a death route skip. But we're going to pass the death route, but we're actually going to be getting the gem from the death route in less than like 20 seconds. Yeah, so. the, the death route like wraps completely around. Like you go left, and then forward, and then right, then down. And it's very long, and there's nothing in it except for this gem at the very end. So if you. Time, time a slide and then a zigzag, which high jumper is able to grab it like that. I'm gonna yeah. uh, risk embedding there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This, this game has a thing called embedding where Crash can actually get stuck in scenery, and it can happen basically almost anywhere. Um, and two casual, two common spots of the Road to Ruin gem jump that he just did, and then also uh, the NSS chain you do for those falling pillars. Yeah, you can also do it here. And again, I'm yep. just risk it. And then I did that to skip that entire puzzle at the beginning of the the bonus round where you, you break a line of sublimation crate, it triggers another one, you break that one, it triggers another one, and you do that like three times and then it opens that box bridge. But with a glitch high jump, you can just completely dodge all of it. Yeah, the glitch high jumps and zigzag are like, like we've said a billion times, they're pretty OP and they really do a lot of, of a lot of skipping in levels, so. I intentionally took a hit there because the next level I only want one mask entering it. So yeah, cycles is something we've mentioned, but uh, so you may be wondering, well, why were we mentioning this? Why set up cycles from the previous level? It's because a lot of cycles in this game and in Crash 1 and 3 are uh, global cycles, which means that they're working all the time, right? Yeah, as, as long as the game is not paused, they're moving. Yeah. Exactly. And they, they reset and on, yeah, and they reset upon death. So the death abuse at the end of plant food sets up a cycle nicely, and wow, I got the snipe. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't even planning on that. Um, yeah, I, I managed to snipe the, the scrubbing enemy into the, the scientist there, which is 
actually a lot harder than it seems. Like, surprised I got it completely on accident. Uh, yeah, so this is the yellow jump path. About halfway through it, you get a clear gem, and then there's nothing else, so I just grab it and then immediately just death of juice. But yeah, cycles in cycles are a pretty significant part of every Crash game. Um, I would say in Crash 2 compared to Crash 1 and 3, while they matter, I don't think they're as like blatantly obvious as they are in 1 and 3. Like what, Crash 1 and 3 are very, very cycle heavy. And 2 is also, but it only really matters more as you get to the top. And a lot of cycles at lower levels you can kind of work around fairly easily. Yeah. And then later Crash games beyond the original trilogy, uh, the way their cycles work are very different. I don't know how any of the, like, the PS2 game cycles work, but the Insane Trilogy, there's no global cycles. Everything's uh, loaded. Everything's loaded either when you get near it or when uh, you enter or when you enter the level. And then in Crash 4, almost everything is <laughs> the moment you get near it. So Rico just did two blade. You can like essentially go through that blade while taking damage. Um, you can do it with a specific setup, so you don't have to wait for like, you know, breaking all the... What do you call that? The, the, fan, the fan blades. The fan blades, yeah. Yeah, it's really slow to just knock three enemies into the fan blade, so you can just... With proper positioning, you can just go without getting hit at all. I messed up the first one, so I lost a mask, but thankfully got through the second one. But because I lost a mask, I had to wait on one of these three scientists. Uh, optimally, you just go through all of them without a hitch. Yeah, the first one is just three blade. You can set it up from the bonus position. Yeah, if you just like go slightly to the left and then just hold forward, generally it works. Uh, I just botched it up a little bit there. All right, so the next level is Bear Down, and I commonly cite this as my least favorite level in the run. Same, actually. I, I can't. A lot of people are just like, "Why? It's like not hard or anything." It's not. My reason for disliking this level isn't any factor of it being hard or unfair it's just boring um for a game like this where the entire run is just like fast paced high octane movement you come to this and everything just slows down dramatically uh, just like the box placement the obstacle placement it's just it, it's just a significant drop in pace for the run yeah, for some reason this level has one part of the level where like it just speeds up. Yeah, like if we cross a certain threshold, it just just magically goes faster. But like the early part of the level is just really, really slow. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's it's a level that's just weird in some ways. And it lags a lot too. Yeah, it's just it's it's a chill level. Like it's definitely one of the easiest levels in the run, but it's also just not that interesting. <laughs> Yeah, about like here, it starts to speed up for some reason. Alright, and... Well, that oh, is wow. the most conspicuous secret I've ever seen. Yeah, there's some platforms right there. Th this is probably the secret they introduced to show you, hey, there are secrets in this game, go look for them. Probably. <laughs> Anybody who's played the game for the first time can see that and be like, okay, there's something up with that. <laughs> Alright, so this is going to be the second visit to Air Crash. Um, normally, when you do this, you're just going back for the box gem, but because I died in the death route, I will have to do that also. I guess something we also didn't mention is, uh, in terms of movement, it's actually fastest to use the D-pad. Oh yeah, I that. Yeah, was for, for whatever reason, moving on diagonals and, you know, you know up, down, left, and right, uh, those eight directions are faster than, like, the 360 you get from analog. Yeah, the and way also, the analog... Okay, what? And I was say, the way the analog stick is mapped on the, the controller, it makes zigzagging, like, borderline impossible, so... Yeah, that as well, and zigzagging is so powerful, um, that it's just, like, it's so much better to do d-pad and because of the existence of curl sliding which is essentially like kind of like half of a zigzag in a slide uh you you don't really miss out on any of the direction from analog so the only spots where i use analog is like on that jet board um because there it doesn't matter yeah 
earlier runs back in the day before zigzag became more of an optimization a lot of runners use analog but as the game got more optimized and as the game got um a lot more difficult and a lot of analog players either adapted to uh, d-pad or just ended up not running <laughs> yeah so and the, yeah. these days it's almost like ubiquitous that people will run this on d-pad yeah, if anybody runs it on analog, we, we yell at them. All right, so the, we don't actually run it. <laughs> um, so the way I'm going to do this in a bit here, uh, I'm going to get this checkpoint. I'm going to actually come back and get this mask, and then just going to... OK, you're going to finish up the level. All right. Yeah, so um, you can actually abuse the, uh, the damage off of the mine to pop into the air and land on that platform and break it with the jet board. Which was very much not intended, but it's really sick. <laughs> All right, so like I said I'm gonna grab this gem and then I'm just gonna go back out and do death abuse, and then from here I'm just gonna do the death route. Um, the reason I left the mask behind is because there's a formation at the end of this death route that is kind of annoying, so it's just easier to just run a run a mask through it. It's extremely mean, the VH. Yeah. Hopefully I don't drop any post this time. Alright, there we go. Thanks. So yeah, the that's, second that's the spot where glitch high jumping is exactly very useful just to dodge that cycle entirely. Yeah, the second jump from like the hippo to the coins is actually pretty tight. Yeah. So it's well played. Yep, so that finishes out both Warp 3 and Warp 2. So, next we'll be going on to the third boss fight, which is Tiny, and he's, uh... He's a bit annoying he's, sometimes. He's Tim. That's Tim. what Wed called uh, he's Tiny, his fresh yeah. splits. Fun Just fact, the NTSC version, uh, he's miss... He's actually miscorrectly named as Taz the Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> this was fixed though later on, but yeah, that is you won't get it here. Yeah. So how this works is that he chases you around, and you just have to trick him into falling through the platforms that disappear. Uh, there's a bit of randomness to it, in that the the way the platforms fall is t taken randomly from a set of like possible outcomes. So it's not fully random, but you do kind of just have to react. The only time where it's really annoying is in this last phase. If you get a corner, Tiny will just like never ever fall for that. So you're just like screwed out of a couple seconds. Oh, thankfully Good I got luck. The nice. Nice. Right, so yeah. see if I can get this little cool uh, visual bug. Let's go, oh, baby. Dance <laughs> dancing air. Everybody dancing air, obviously. No, actually don't. <laughs> the funny thing is that if you mess that up, you can actually die and then have to do the fight again. <laughs> yeah, it was actually kind of risky. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm pretty comfortable with it when I'm right next to him. All right, so this is Ruination. My opinion on this level is that it is one of the single coolest levels in the run. It is also one of the most evil levels in the run because it it likes to drop a lot of inputs and this is a level where you do not want to drop any inputs. Yeah, this is uh, the laggiest level in the game. The, uh, I think so, yeah, it should be. It, it's up there and you'll, you'll notice a lot of these uh, very similar to Road to Ruin looking formations. Uh, they're very mean. That one is a bunch of nitros, which is why I didn't touch it. <laughs> you can still break them with the nitro detonator even if you don't activate them. Oh, uh, yep, there was a drop. Yeah. In so, uh, record that I've used before uh, doing the green hive into a green gem path because of cycles again. Uh, back yeah, ba basically, because there's no respawn animation at that checkpoint, it's very, very fast to death and use, and it lets me know exactly what all of these cycles are going to look like as opposed yeah. to having to react to whatever's there. And you can stand in this area for some reason. Yeah, it just makes this entire section trivial. So just grab the gem and then death of use, because we still have the entire rest of the level to go through. I also might play the end of this level a little safe, because it's very important I leave it with uh, two masks. Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, um, this level 
you want to leave with two masks in the next level um, hanging out we're going to be getting triple mask form which is the only instance where we want to do it in crash 2 we do it i think in every every run of minus 90 percent um because it's really yeah, 90%, fast yeah, 90 percent <laughs> the level yeah 90 percent don't even go to level even <laughs> one level yeah nice boss team boss rush yeah th there's so much happening in this bonus round that a lot of the time stuff just deloads, but thankfully by the time you get to them, they will. Also, did you see that small, super small one centimeter gap at the end of the bonus? You can fall through there. It's pretty yeah. great. <laughs> Dying in that bonus is very bad. <laughs> it takes forever to enter it. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. yeah, it's not a short bonus either. Like I said, I'm gonna maybe take a lot of this. Okay, so that's like one of those. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna wanna focus here. All right, so this, there's a cool set of rotation platforms that is, they're the only ones that you see in the game, kind of like circular in that regard. Like yeah. you see some back and forth, but circular, there's those two. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, there's like a, there's a handful of the back and forth ones in the Road to Ruin Death Drop and none of the circular ones. Like I said, I'm, I'm playing the safe mostly because I also can't really hear the audio for the logs too well, so I just wanted to know the timing of it. All right, but cool, we left this with two masks, so that's good. Hell yeah. Nice. So likewise, I'll probably play the beginning of Hanging Out in the safe as well. Just because I, I do really want to show this off. Yeah, that sounds good. So, right off the bat, there's this enemy that is nearly impossible to get around, so we always just wait on it. Yeah. You could skip it, but you'd be risking getting hit. Yeah, it's very it's tricky. Worth. Yeah, it's not it's worth it at all. Just, yeah, just wait. Yeah, like I said, I'm gonna play this very safe. Just because I do want to show this trick off. So again, pay, pay attention to the speed on the hang rails. Pretty slow, not as slow as to walks, but nothing as slow as walks. Not as fast as it could have been, but it doesn't matter because we got this. So I'm gonna immediately just start doing normal running, and then once you get on the handrails, you just go lightning fast with invincibility. Uh, this is one of the two ways you can go through this really quickly. The other option is to just jump across the hot pipes and zigzag. Uh, the latter is technically faster, but I find it, it's harder to do optimally because you can get stuck in a lot of the scenery. So the, the hangrail one is easier, and it's also flashier, so it, it better shows off exactly what's going on. This bonus right here is pretty technical. Yeah, I love this bonus. This is this has, this might actually be my favorite bonus in the world. Like th this is this is where you test how good you are at spin bouncing. Apparently, I'm pretty good at clean. Clean, clean. I haven't failed that, or like, I think I've failed it like once since the de-rusting, which is good because th there was a point in time where I was very, very bad at that, and like almost always killed like, several runs to it. I got a body slam that <laughs> thankfully didn't kill me. I actually cannot do that yet. Like, I haven't put that much practice into it. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, so I, I intentionally took damage there because uh, I had to do a death abuse because there's this big open space that if you explore back here... Oh, what is this? And behold, the only instance of using uh, the pull up your legs maneuver. Uh, it is only useful in this spot across the entire Crash series. You can do this in Crash 3 also, and it has no purpose. Uh, but yeah, this is another secret exit. Surprise, surprise. And this unlocks the second of the two secret levels that only has a gem. And this one is totally fly. Um, a lot of runners do this after they do the next level of digging it. Uh, I don't know if it actually... I've been told it doesn't really make a huge difference. It's, it's just that digging it's a harder level, so a lot of people like to get it out of the way. Um, I actually, when I was learning this game, I found this level to be more troublesome, which is so I've always done this first. Uh, but this is a nighttime jungle level. Um, so much like the nighttime bear level, it's a lot of memorization. Uh, your light source is limited, though. Uh, you have these fireflies, and they only stick to you for a certain amount of time. 
Yeah, so thankfully they changed the light source from Crash 1 because in Crash 1 it was the mask, like it was Aqua Aqua as your light, so if you got hit, you just lost the light and you couldn't see. So I thought, oh, it probably is smart to change that and put it as a Firefly instead. Yeah. Alright, so the Firefly in this bonus for some reason just doesn't like to follow you, but thankfully we don't need him. And you can just do the bonus and head out. 16 boxes is the magical number. Yep. And then out. Yeah, the way the way this level lines up, there's there's a good portion of it you have to do in the dark. Like this next part coming up here. This firefly lasts all of like five seconds, but there's all of these body slam crates that you have to take care of. And I think what they wanted you to do is walk into the dark ahead of the firefly and break all these crates and then go back and get them. But that's really slow, so we're just gonna not do that. Just this is where I said where the memorization is really key. I, I know what scenery I can land on to just dodge the very precarious amount of holes that are in that section. Yeah, there's like three or four holes, even if you can just fall into it. It's super mean. Yeah, so that went really well, thankfully. <sighs> so next we have, excuse me. Next we have Digging It. Uh, Digging It is a very, it's, I think it's one of the longer levels in Warp 4, but it's not the longest level. Um, I think my score for this is like three and a half minutes. So it, yeah. it's, def it's definitely up there. It's it's only a little bit shorter than Core Crash, um, which is after this. But so Digging It, actually, there is a trick that can be done called the Box Dupe. We're actually going to be doing that, a Box Dupe in Core Crash. The Kolar Crash one is basically essential and it's consistent 100%. The one in Digging It has a 25% chance of failing and it's just not worth it. Um, yeah, I think it saves... Uh, 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Um, the only person recently at top level who's gone for it is the record holder, Super Bone Fan. And he went for it, I think, because the to run... Save the run, yeah. Yeah, the run yeah. was not going to PB without it. And he went for it, got it, and got record. Yeah, most of the world records in this game have not had Digging It do, but it's, it's not worth it. But um, yeah, Digging It also introduces the bees. Uh, the bees are really annoying. Um, For you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, bees, bees sting, bro. <laughs> I'm, talk I'm, talking bees crash, sting. I'm talking crash to the guy who's second place in the category. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, bees, um, the bees will be more annoying in the last level called behaving. Uh, haha, funny pun. Um, also, Rico trigger the checkpoint before entering um, the bonus because uh, there's there's a glitch that can happen where the box counter gets messed up. So yeah, it's just... if, you, if you, there's enough crates in that bonus where you can hit the checkpoint before the, the box counter is done ticking up and it will, it will save whatever the crate count was at the moment you broke the checkpoint. So if you were to break that checkpoint and then die, you would lose some of the crates in the bonus. Yeah, you'd yeah. get locked out from getting the boxes, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this so, is another forked path where where there's a whole lot of nothing in the middle. So I just got the two crates at the beginning of the death route and I'm gonna go all the way down the right path and then backtrack through the, the end of the left path and just get what I need. Uh, these fences are a good showcase of what glitch high jumping can do for you. It just lets me just kind of jump over them entirely. The so split paths. Oh, go ahead. I was just say the split paths in this game. Naughty Dog really didn't do a good job at separating the backtrack. Like you can basically backtrack every split path. So I don't even know <laughs> what the intended route is for this. Seriously, I don't either. I think I'll die without knowing. I think the, I think the route I did casually is like not even the one that people generally go for casually. So I, 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 I don't, don't even, even know. I yeah. I never I never even hundred percent of this game until I speed run. So it's a hard game, but yeah. So there's actually gonna be actually no. Never mind. This level doesn't have a secret at all. It doesn't have a secret a secret exit. We're, I'm I thought this was the level, but um, no. So Rico's just gonna go to the end of the level, get the gem. Exit normally. Uh, don't that mind me. That one was kind of looking at me funny though. I don't know. Um, I mean, mm, I'm pretty you sure. You should maybe like go back. I'm pretty sure he was. I gotta, I gotta get the gem. That's more important. I'm yeah, pretty sure true. he was trash talking your PS2 color. So you should. Uh, no! Oh, pink that's that's pink awesome. is awesome. Hold on, hold on. Go We're going back. I, I, can't, go back. I can't tolerate that. Yeah. Pink is the best PS2 color. Yeah. Rico is playing on a pink PS2, by the way. It's pretty basic. Oh, oh, that was well, oh my god. Well, never mind. I lied. There is a secret. 
<laughs> wow. I will say that is probably the one secret exit, that, the secret in the game that is very, very cryptic. Like, the, the hint is that that plant is by himself, and you should apparently kill every enemy in the game. Yeah, it is. It is so easy to miss. Also, we go back into Totally Fly because it puts us in Warp 4 instead. Yeah, yeah that, that unlocks Road to Ruin, but we already have everything in Road to Ruin. So it's faster to just go back into Totally Fly, because if we leave through Road to Ruin, it puts us back in Warp 3. And like White Boss said, doing Totally Fly just puts us back in Warp 4. It saves us an elevator trip. All right, so this is Cold Hard Crash. Uh, this is the casual player's worst nightmare. Uh, True. Uh, the, the way to 100% this level, like, intentionally, is very, very evil. Um, yeah, we'll probably point it out how. Um, yeah. Just to compare the routes, because it's pretty insane how different speedrunning, the speedrunning way is. Yeah, so I'm gonna pay, pay attention a little bit. Um, All right, so. I, I, I don't want, I don't want that. I'll explain. Sure. So, as uh, Steel mentioned in the previous level, there's this one glitch that you can do that is the box loop, right? Um, so what to set? This up so we can get all of the crates in this level. Rico's gonna go to the death route because there's a death route in this level. So he's gonna trigger the death route so it's saved and um, then like go back into the death route. <laughs> this will make sense later on, but uh, yeah. yeah. But the it, important thing by entering the death route, it will now it will now yeah, no longer it, be fun. Yeah, it just secures it. That's that's what you need to know because we need to death route. Use. Um, yeah, Rico goes back to the bonus, and here's where the important part happens. So you just break all the boxes as normal. Um, yeah, TNT spinning because, as we mentioned before, TNT spinning. Uh, this is scary with no mask on. Tell you, <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, I got it. And yeah, there's a bunch of boxes. Man, I forgot so counting. Much right? Stuff. Let me just start the level over. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So, well. Whoa, look at that box counter. Yeah, 72. So, yeah, so this is the box dupe that Dill was talking about back in Digging It. Uh, if you if you die while the box counter from the bonus is still ticking, uh, when you respawn, the game forgets to reset your box count. So it essentially just duplicates a bunch of boxes. So I'm at the beginning of the level and I've already broken 72 crates. Um, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And despite the fact that this takes so much time to set up, it's still worth doing because of what you have to do to 100% this level normally. Um, like, so basically what you're supposed to do to get 100% is, you know, you go through the death route, you break every crate, you go back out of the death route, um, and then, or what was it? It's like, There's a go, section to the right side, like... You, you like okay you go into the death row there's a freaking exclamation mark that's like that spawns that one box that that, that one i like box right there at the end of it then you have to you have to hit that then go back all the way through the death route to get that box then like you would skip the checkpoint at that point like to 100 percent in, in like one visit like yeah the checkpoint and then, and then, and then the like to top it all off you have to get that gem also yeah. Which, exactly. and so, and then it puts you at this part, which is the very end of the level. So to do this properly, you have to like get all the crates in the death route, get that gem, death abuse, and then finish the level normally. And that just takes forever. Yeah. So with much. the with the box dude, I just basically just cut out the entire last you know two thirds of the level. Yeah, um, casually you know, just get the, the gem <laughs> like on a revisit or something. Yeah. Something of note is that I left that last crate behind. Uh, if I break up too many crates, it'll count as me not having collected all of them. So I would get to the end of the level and it would say 156 out of 155. Um, so the the route for the box dupe leaves three crates of leeway to work with, which is why I left three of them behind while I was doing the trick and why I didn't break that last one. But yeah, yeah that was pretty cool. You should all, should all like try that out. I think. Uh... Yeah, that that's one of those strats where like, if you learn this category, you should just do it immediately because it's just it's notably faster. It's not hard to learn, and it honestly makes the level it, it makes the level way easier. And it is definitely one of the most satisfying tricks in the run. Yeah, for sure. By comparison to the rest of the warping, though, this level of behaving is pretty straightforward. I want to say. There's like one. Oh, okay. I got 
I missed a crate there, but I'm not gonna keep these masks for long, so I just took advantage of my damage piece there to blow it up. But yeah, um, fun fact, I'm terrified of bees, so this level actually kind of creeps me out. Um, you're supposed to Big hide same. from the bees by digging under this red dirt, but... Oh, what is that circus and echo? That's weird. Um, but because of neutral slide spin, you can just outrun the bees. Wow. I got I got scenery. Scenery, yeah. Yeah, so scenery in this game is weird where there's just like a lot of like pixels and polygons that you can get stuck under. Thankfully it hasn't really happened too too much in this run yet, but that that was a nice place for it to begin. It can happen a lot. Yeah, so I'm gonna break this checkpoint and you know that stair that staircase of nitros was very very weird. I wonder what that's about. Oh, it's another secret entrance. And so this is probably the <laughs> single hardest route in the entire run. But like legit. Yeah, but so I, I'm glad we just don't have to do it because they put the purple jump right at the beginning. But... So like the right side, after after that gem, onwards to the right side, there's just some bullet spam legit. It's yeah. really hard. <laughs> but it's basically the closest that this game gets to like a bullet hell. So I, I think they knew, which is why the purple gem is at the beginning of the route. Because like I, I remember, like there was one time I just like went back and revisited that section. And I was like, this is hard. Yeah. So. I remember that that one time that we're, when we like played it at like GDQ that one time. Yeah. Yeah. Just like what was what was going on? <laughs> There's I I basically know like every aspect of this game, but that that path in particular is still very foreign to me. I don't know anything about it aside from that it's just really difficult. All right, so this should be the end of the level. I didn't jump out of the dirt for some reason. Nice. All right, so that's all level four. Nice, nice. All right, so the next boss is Engine, and he's like one of the only bosses that takes any semblance of thought. Um, so I'm actually gonna try to focus on this one and also listen to my game better. Or we could just not go up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Crash just shoots Wumpa from. I don't know where he... <laughs> I guess he's just using all the Wumpa we collected throughout the entire game. And uh, Rico wants to destroy both arms at the same time. Each arm takes 10 shots. Um, I, I, yeah. So I, I missed it, but there's a backup that only loses a couple seconds. But basically yeah, you want fine. to break both, both arms and both shoulders at the same time, because if you break them individually, the other piece regenerates health. Um, Yes. So these next shoulders, each of them has five hit points. So, all right, I got one and two, so that, that's fine. Or a couple. So that's four. Four, four and four. Should be good. All right, so I'm going to I'm gonna try and go for a one cycle on this last phase, but it's kind of tight, so I just need to focus. <laughs> Easy game. That so, fun good. fact, I just started doing that trick yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can like barely get that. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it's very tight, and if you miss it, you die and start the whole fight over. So I'm really glad I was able to show that off. Alright, so... This is the final warp room, and we start right off with Piston It Away. Um, casually, probably the hardest level of the entire game. Speedrun wise, still one of the hardest levels in the entire game. <laughs> um, oh, off to a great start. Losing, losing the mask I wanted to keep. Um, so this level has a, yeah, this level has a death route. And yeah. the the way the way this, so the way I'm going to be doing this is actually completely intentional. This is how they plan, like being able to do it. I'm gonna, my moves all week here, so I'm just yeah, gonna slow down a bit. Uh, this level set on cycles. Thankfully, it's decently easy to like get back on the cycle if you just wait for a little bit. Um, Deal. Did you want to add anything to this? Level? Yeah, Rico's gonna be doing a lot of like 3D jumps, like we've explained earlier, to move around pistons, the enemies, and to get hopefully ahead or um, maneuver the cycles. Um, yeah. So there was the death route there, and 
yes, I am leaving it behind and coming back to it. This is the way you're supposed to 100% the level. There's no, like, special, like, speed strats going on. This is just casually, this is how they expected you to do it. Mm -hmm. So you have to, to go all the way here for this single crate and then backtrack <laughs> back to the death route because there are crates in the death route. And there's, there's also no exit to the death route. When you reach the end of it, you just reach the end of the level. Is, this is very, very cruelly designed. <laughs> and I fell a bit short of that jump. <laughs> but yeah, thankfully, deaths in the bonus don't count, so we're fine. Yeah, that death doesn't count towards the death route, so it's not a big deal. All right, I got a Ricky Bounce now. Ricky Bounce, yeah. So yeah, Ricky Bounce or... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, War 5 is like really hard especially being at the end of the run there's like anything can go wrong in basically any of the levels so yeah R ricky yeah. bouncing is the name we have for something where if you spin on like the frame you land on the ground you just get a little short hop and it's usually annoying because it's not intentional uh oftentimes it can lead to a death thankfully there it just led to me being a little slow on a cycle so i think i cleared all the enemies here so we should be safe to the end yeah you're supposed to save that electric guy to bounce off of him, but with a glitch high jump, you can just do that. You, I think you can also 3D Ranger on that. Also, I'm just gonna say that if Rico died at any point before touching the death road, I'm just gonna reach the magnitude of this. He would have needed to reset the level. Yeah, the entire level. Like, the entire level. So yeah, a death in there could have been super costly, but no. Rico's too good, so we in there. This is another one of those levels where over time you just learn how to be consistent at it just because of what it demands of you. Yeah, for sure. And then I did a little 3D range there to dodge that last set of cycles. Clean. And then, yeah, that was pissing it away. So Spaced Out is the next level, and it's level 25, so casually it's supposed to be the last level you do. And I would say casually it's probably a little easier than pissing it away, but speed-wise I actually think it's hard, the harder of the two. I think most people will agree with you, actually. So I'm actually going to do a death abuse at the very beginning because we're going to set up a cycle for a secret route that's about to be done, and this basically sets up the god cycle for it. Yeah. So this is the multicolored gem path. You can only complete it when you have all five colored gems. And because of the death abuse, I know what the cycles are going to look like. I love to get through those really quickly. Cool concentration time right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's hard. This section is tricky for sure. Yeah. Hard parts are basically over though. Yeah, the first three levels in this warp room are all run killers, but once you get to a certain point, it kind of chills out. Mm -hmm. But. The, this level, the level before, and the level after are all pretty high octane. Yeah. So I'm gonna grab that gem and then just immediately go back to the beginning of the level. Nice shoes. Yeah. Have, have we seen shoes at all besides that? I don't there's think so. A, there's been a few instances of shoes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, wow. And it has been paying yeah. attention. <laughs> yeah. Hey. So when, when you fall into a hole, uh, there's a 25% chance that you get the shoes animation, and if you do, it loses like, what, like a second and a half or something. The cycle goes on. Yeah. So like, it's not, it's never desirable, but there's also nothing you can do about it. So. It matters more in the the game over abuse category because you do a lot of death abusing there. Yeah. Um, but here, it's not really a big deal. Up. So I guess we didn't even really mention this in Piston. That, <laughs> that is true. We, you can you can bounce off of that enemy and then use them to end up on the the little screen there and just let you dodge all those enemies. And there's a like cute little corner cut you can do there, but it runs the risk of embedding. So I'm just gonna not. Oh my god! It breaks me in memory. I killed a 117 pace run to that once. I had to improvise a bit there, but it's fine. Oh 
nice, actually. There's not much to say about the end of yeah. the level. Yeah, the thing with like, the end of Space Out is very, very straightforward, so from here is not too much. I guess we can start talking about the next level, which is Pack Attack. Pack Attack contains a trick that is, in my opinion, the single coolest trick in the entire run. Uh, it's a bit risky, though. It runs the risk of crashing the game. I do have a backup file if it happens, though, and it's completely controllable, so if it crashes, it's totally on me. Um, but we'll see if I can get it. I've been pretty consistent at it, like, recently, but if I mess it up, I'll just go for it again. Do you want the ultimate screen there? Yeah, I want to get it. All right. Oh, I got it for strike. Nice. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I was going to fail it. Um, so yeah, this is this is jetpack. Let's go ahead, Bill. Yeah. So basically, you can do this level without the jetpack. You can also do the other level, the rocket, without the jetpack, but it's not faster. But um, you can pause buffer, um, neutral slide spin through the jetpack loading zone, and Crash can actually skip through it. And then that door is completely it's it's not solid, so you can just walk through it. And the boxes are conveniently placed in the level where you can platform and maneuver around everything, and you can get all the boxes. And then at the end, he's gonna get the crystal, but it's actually gonna warp him to the end. I think Das actually explained this recently, if you wanna talk about it, Rico, once you do it. Yeah, that's uh, the reason why it happens. Because we were all misinformed for like years until Das recently explained us the real reason. All right, that went really well. The reason the game can crash there is that there are certain animations that this level doesn't have programming into them, namely the animation for getting electrocuted on foot, for getting killed by Nitro on foot, and for um, getting uh, invincibility. So if any of those three things happened, the game would have crashed. So the movement I was doing there was extremely precise. But the launch at the end, if I understand correctly, oh, I got the auto kill with the double mass. That's why I entered Rocket. Nice. Um, uh, that, that saves a bit of time because it shortens this animation. But the reason you get pushed to the end, as I understand it, I could be a little misinformed on this, and if so, I apologize. Um, there is like a sort of like invisible wall at the end of the level that you're forced behind if you're off the jetpack. So the moment that that invisible wall gets spawned in, you are forced behind it, which is why you get that push at the end. But you're able to grab the crystal just in time and then uh, just skip the entire last leg of the level. Uh, the reason we don't do jetpack lists in this level is because you see how very awkwardly placed all of these boxes are. Uh, it's very, very annoying to try and break everything up in this level on foot. And I think, like, if done properly, it saves, like, one second, so it's just not worth it. Yeah, so contrary to the previous level, you cannot actually finish this level, like, with a warp or anything like that. Yeah, at some point you would have you to definitely it and finish it and finish it on the jetpack. Like, when you cross a certain point, the, the level just kills you. Yeah, so... Thankfully, that went really well. The previous level saves 20 seconds when you're without the jetpack, so it's big, it's really significant. Yeah, it, it's one of those tricks where for a while it was considered top level only, but I think it's one of those tricks where if you're confident enough in doing it, I think you should be able to do it at any level. <laughs> now that I see this stuff all about the fire, yeah, Rico just like rush through the scientists because Ompal crashes fast enough to do that. Yeah, you can just go right through the scientists and the fire doesn't have any hitbox. So this is the last level, by the way. This is a night fight. And this is the other nighttime jungle level. Um, honestly, pretty straightforward compared to everything else in the warp room. So there really isn't a lot to say about it. Yeah, it's... It's pretty straightforward. There's a death route in here, but like, like you don't actually need to go inside. <laughs> you well, you go you go through the death route, but from behind. Yeah, so you just don't need to worry about it at all. It's like I said, the first three levels in this warp room, pissed, oh, uh, piston it away, spaced out, and pack attack. Um, they're all pretty scary levels and definitely very tense. But once you get to night fight and rocket, the rest of the levels, the rest of the runs are honestly pretty chill. <laughs> it dropped my slide in the bonus. Um, this is what happens when you say the old chill. Yeah. Where she's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Night fight's not that bad. Night fight. Hold no, on. Yeah. I think they were not. <laughs> I, I got a roll. Okay, yeah. So it's just pulling out all the stops at the end. It's like, what do you mean I'm chill? I just die twice in this bonus. 
Thankfully, we're not playing on NTSC though, because on the NTSC version, there's actually a random crash that can happen at the end of the bonus. Uh, yeah, when you get on the platform, the it's NTSC version. pretty frequent too. It's super annoying. Yeah. yeah. Th also, thankfully, this Firefly actually follows us. I'm not going to tell which why. True. Yeah, so this is another split path level, so Rico's gonna backtrack, and this full path is actually like really easy to <laughs> go back yeah. on. All, all that's at the back of this one is two crates in the gem, so... I... that was my fault. I... For some reason, I thought the rat was the first enemy. Alright, so yeah, I, I said knife fight was pretty chill, so naturally I've died three times in it. Classic. Classic speed on your jinx. It's okay. I got I, I got first okay. try plus. That's all that matters. <laughs> True. Okay. Listen to everyone that wants to speed run. The game knows what you're thinking. So even if you don't say it, you will. <laughs> the, the game will think like, oh, you're thinking this, and it will kill you. There's a very good clip of me being on like a 119 pace run, and when my PB was a 120, and I was like just like complaining. I was like, oh, this run's really bad. I can't believe it's gonna PB. And, and Dill's in my chat being like, oh, don't just like, don't even worry, don't kill the run, just keep going. And I'm leaving the knife fight bonus. I was like, well, obviously I'm not gonna kill it. And right when I say that, I die immediately outside of the bonus. <laughs> So yeah, the game the game is sentient. The game knows. I'm I'm sure it has ears. I'm sure. All right, so it it took a, it took a a, a little uh, took a little we pain. Oh, right, we got there, and that should be everything. So yep. All yeah, there's is the final boss. There's no final boss in this game, spoiler. Yeah. I'll, I'll verify that I have everything. When I pause, this should say 97% because the last 3% is Cortex himself. Yep, we are good. All right. So this boss fight is very quick and very easy. Um, and because I said that, I'm going to mess up the second hit. Uh, but time is on the third hit, so I'll call it. It's in probably like 20 seconds or something. Yeah, so there's the first hit. I missed the second hit. Oh, no. <laughs> I haven't done that at all in the past few days. All right, so this is I'm, I'm, so, for content, obviously. I'm, I'm so used to this, so I was like, it doesn't even bother me. <laughs> yeah, this is the easiest fight that I still lose like in seconds. Uh, but yeah, so time is now. Time. GG. No! So what was the final time? Final time. Oh, we might have stopped it a little bit late. Uh, it was probably around 122.30, I would okay, guess. Okay, um, and then we do... Okay, yeah, we... Okay, 120... Yeah, so... 122.30, Sorry, All right, so on leaderboard time, it's uh, 13 seconds faster because we start on the first movement. So that was pretty good for a reset list. Uh, like hearing that you had to do the yield deal uh, first yeah, try. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the biggest blemish in that run had to have been the Eel deal, and that was probably about two minutes by itself. But yeah, that was uh, that was a pretty good run. I'm happy with that. Yeah, uh, yeah underestimate, and that's you know all we can really yep. hope for here on Hawk. Yeah, <laughs> and that was Crash Bandicoot two, 100. percent I hope you guys really liked it. I really enjoyed it. Crash two is such a great game, so I appreciate you uh, re uh, learning the. 100% for us. Uh, that was super cool. Rico, do you have any final thoughts or shout outs that you'd like to? Take uh, yeah, sure. First off, shout outs to Dylan Whitepaws for agreeing to commentate on short notice. Uh, definitely helped me through a lot of it because there's just there's just so much going on in this game that I could I couldn't potentially cover all of it. Um, so, yeah. Um, do you guys want to throw in anything? Um, shout outs to the pink PS2 because again it's base. Uh, I can't shout outs to, to shout outs to Rico's cat. <laughs> you didn't say anything. Oh yes. nice, she's been right next to me. Um, but yeah, I, I can't show the pink PS2, but I can show the pink PS2 controller that I didn't use in the run. <laughs> uh, Very yeah. nice. Um, yeah, so this one's really cool. Um, if you guys are interested in learning it or any of the Crash games, really, they're all really sick. I would definitely recommend joining both the original Crash series Discord and the HD series Discord. Um, you know, go to speedrun.com, check out runs and all the resources. Um, ask any questions. Most people, like, we're all very happy to help out. Um, 
And if, if you like watching crash runs, all three of us are crash runners. Uh, White Paws is a top runner in Crash 1. Bill's a top runner in Crash 2, and he also does Ratchet and Clank. Um, I play like all of the Crash games. So like recently I've been doing Crash 4, but I've basically run every every platform. Rick, Rick is a Crash speedrunner. I speedrun Ori, Bill speedruns Rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much uh, for being here, Rico. If uh, everyone, if you enjoyed the run, please make sure you follow uh, Rico underscore KSB here on Twitch, uh, as well as our commentators for tonight, Dilwingo and White Paws with two A's. Uh, that is going to be wrapping it up for tonight. Uh, AGDQ 2021 online is less than two weeks away from January 3rd to the 10th. So we'll be having a week-long marathon benefiting the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Prize submissions are open until December 26th. You can go to gamestonequick.com to find out more information on that. Tomorrow we have a few holiday-themed games being speedrun here on the Hotfix with Bargain Bin, as well as our show Speedruns from the Crypt. So stay tuned for some holiday cheer and holiday fright. That starts tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I have been your host, Smooth Operative. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, we have had an amazing season of Time Capsule throughout 2020. Uh, I can honestly not thank the runners, commentators, viewers enough for being part of this show. There's my cat. And this whole... <laughs> she waited, <laughs> whole she waited till the end of the run. And big thank you to Rico's cat for being so kind and quiet for the run. <laughs> um, um, also for AGDQ 2021, there's actually a crash run in it this year. There, there is. Can you tell us which run it will yep, be? It's Rico? Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, Crash One Any Percent by Depcow, who is the current record holder in that category by a lot. So he's uh, he's very, very talented. So you guys should definitely check that out. Yeah, and Deal will be also running uh, Ratchet, a GDQ. Also, Deal yeah. Will. Hi. Ratchet, Ratchet and Crash. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> we'll be looking forward to that. Absolutely. Um, a huge thanks and shout outs to Richard, our tech. Uh, he's been consistent this year and awesome, making sure everything is working as intended. Uh, this show would not be possible without him. So Richard, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate you. All that being said, Time Capsule will be back in the new year every other Tuesday, starting January 9th at a new time, 7 p.m. Eastern. I hope everyone has a safe and happy holiday. Take care of yourselves and each other. We will see you next time. Goodbye, everyone. Yep. Bye.